one time I was going like this, right? And my girlfriend like started cracking up like Martha, right? Martha, she's like, I don't know if you met her in, you, you never met her, eh? I don't yeah, think so. Yeah, I you never met, met her. her. Yeah, so we go to you Jungle just, you, Gym every you day. You just met her. That's right. That's right. I Oh, wow. Yeah, every day, dude. Seven days a week, we're going to Jungle Gym. Yeah, we do the ice bath in the together. In the, in the, in, go ahead. In the town or in the beach? No, no, town, town. In the town. Beach is too town. far. Yeah. Town. Beach we do like once a week. And uh, like on a Sunday, yeah. we go to the beach. But dude, yeah, so we're going, um, we're, we're alternating ice baths. So the first day she did it, it was like, it was so hard for her. And now every single time she's doing it, no problem. Just like she's having fun, bro. Yeah. What the fuck, man? So proud of her. Oh yeah, of course. It's fun. It's funny. So I'm at, I'm I'm at a really good gym here called uh, Body Factory. Yeah, I've heard of and, it. And um, it's really good. So it's two it's two British guys, um, who set it up, and it's just like really booming. Like very good community, uh, lots of entrepreneurs in there. Very sensible conversations about important things. I like, know, like surface level, like bullshit, you know, conversations, and um. So I'm loving it, you know, it's, it's, um, it's really good. And, uh, it's the reason why I've, you know, one of the main reasons why I've come back to, um, to Changu is because of that community there. Cause it feels like a home, you know? Yep. 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 You don't have to, you don't have to work for the community. It's there for you. Exactly. Right. That's the key. Exactly. So that's yeah. the key. You never no, visited. You told me about it. You to yeah. You told me about it a couple of times. I'm not much of a coworker. I'm a bit of a lone wolf. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So... <laughs> Um, but yeah, you said it was, you said that it's really good. It's from a, from a community perspective, right? Yeah, man. Really good. Be some of the best people are there and like every day you go and you see the same or similar people or new people come in. Like just the other day, um, I met this guy, Mark Olivier and, uh, we were just, just literally in the, in the bathroom, like washing hands. Right. And he was next to me. I'm like, Hey dude, you're new here. He's like, yeah, it's my first day. And just from his accent, I was like. Hey, you're from Montreal, aren't you? <laughs> and he's like, oh, shit, how did you know? I was like, ah, I'm from Montreal, too. Like, I, I know Montreal very well. So we became good friends. And, uh, dude, yeah, and this guy's uh, doing an affirmations app um, called Innertune. Awesome. And it's like affirmations, and there's like 15, I don't know, 15,000 affirmations. or It's like his whole life's work is now about this. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Just like awesome, right? It's it's a it's a, yeah. I mean, it's incredible. The, 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 but this is the thing in these places. It's it's it, like where they've these things find you in these like hot spots, you know. And it's inc it's increasingly ha you know happening. Well, the, the fact that we're here on this call now, right? And like that's like bouncing messages and doing stuff. Do you know what I mean? Like it's just like it is crazy. So, um, and it's so so far adrift from um. Uh, if we were in, you know, if either you or I or whoever it is, any of these people were to live in sort of normal, normal places, you have to like actively seek um, people who are on your sort of like wavelength. Whereas like in these places, it's just like boom, like next but like boom, it's just like en endless the um, endless supply of um, of switched on like conscious, cool people. So I just love it, man. I just love it. You know, you were talking about um, uh, just right before you were talking about like the uh, the the trauma and how it relates to relationships and dating, right? In Bali, yeah, yeah. It's I, it's, it's a funny one actually because so I came here in I was here for December and January. Uh -huh. I was mostly mostly like just regular work pattern, and I I dated a little bit, but. I was kind of still not very clear in my mind about about what I was looking for, right? So I didn't really notice it too much. Then now I've been here a bit, a little bit longer, you kind of see it. I feel like there's a lot of people, as when you travel to any of these places, that you know they're on on it on a journey of either some realizations or some self discovery or whatever it might be. And probably actually, if I reflect on what I've been doing for the last few years since I started ethical bedding, would be. Um, I've probably been doing that myself, but at a very slow pace in my own in my own way and my own stubborn way of of trying to figure it out for my, these things out for myself. But um, 
specifically, you know, what, what I mentioned previously was uh, this this guy Mike, um, and we were hanging out uh, back end of twenty twenty two. Again, multi multi business owner building interesting fintechs, sort of start getting them to the point of scale and, and selling them. And he's forty seven now, um, but we just have like real conversations and like very aligned values. And he's actually starting a really cool business at the moment. It's they do um, it's kind of like a it's big data. And it's an award-based business focused on customer service, which amalgamates data across like, you know, hundreds of platforms for anything like, not just like hotels, but it could be like barbers, local barbers, local butchers, any sorts of thing, which it's, it's, um, uh, cause you know how it is when you get amazing customer service, it creates a, it's eventually going to create a community whereby, you know, you, you know, if you go to these certain places that they're, they're, they're going to be um the best not because of a paid for award but because of a data a data driven ap- approach based on empirical evidence right which is what you kind of want um but he's like it's a it's a big one he's gone for a big one this time but anyway so so we, so he is like um so he's like dated women from all over the world and was married before he's got a couple of teenage boys and so he's been helping you know me with some some um some things for how to manage my um uh, a relationship with my ex and my relationship with my with my son, which is great. Um, but I can't remember the exact line he said, but it was, a lo- it was along the lines of it's like I don't, it's like you don't care what what you know what someone's favorite color is, what they like for dinner, or what this. So really, you want to know like what what are you what are your deepest traumas? Yes. And not only that, what have you done to overcome them? What tools have you learned? And how are you different as a person now as a result of it? And it's that it's that level of um of honesty with yourself which elevates you as a human being and enables you to know yourself better treat yourself better treat other people better um and particularly you know in terms of dating when stuff starts to get serious you you kind of want to know that hopefully you know nothing will come out of the woodwork but if it if it does that or if there are scenarios where, again, there's a, a body of empirical evidence which suggests this person can cope with new trauma ah, because they have the tools from old trauma. Yes, you know, it's like, but this, this, this is what life is about. You know, it, it is. You know, life is joyful as we know, and especially if you don't seek it, but you observe it and take pleasure from the small joys in the world. But. <laughs> Everybody's lives are just a series of traumas, right? Yes. In 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 many different ways, and things and things that you that you have to overcome. And this is, you know, ultimately it comes down to, you know, I'm not going to want to tell you this as a neuroscientist, but it's it's how it's how you train it's how you train your how you train your mind um, to um, uh, to not control. I think that's the wrong word, but cope and learn from and evolve so yeah i think it's it's really fascinating and and this is the other thing as well you know and i'm I'm guessing this is the reason why you you're you've been reading this book and you're looking at some of these things as well um i'm very much a believer that if as humans if you have the ability the capability the um and the, the you know the skills and the the drive to be able to positively impact to the people's lives through your learnings and your own lessons, whatever they may be, um, and pass down knowledge. Basically, that's so important. It's so important. Like in a world where there's not enough joy often, and people are hurting, and it's like it's so important to do that. And I I'm yeah. I think, uh, you know, it's, as we, you're a little bit older than me, aren't you? You're a few, you've got a few years on me, but I think from memory, but 41. I'm 36 now. 41. 41, yeah. So I'm 36 and it's like, kind of get to this point, you're like doing your business thing and you're like, oh God, like I forgot about dating. Ah, I need to do that. And you're like, and you, still, and you just put all this stuff just like on the back burner of your life. You're just like, right, business. And then it gets to this point, you're like, right, okay, like now I need to start, um, 
you kind of want to go to that like deeper level of understanding of yourself and and other people as well right so yeah it's it is fascinating it's fascinating so I don't know. I don't know if you visited here. I can't remember if you, if you if you said or not. I think you said you had visited here, right? Yeah, I have. I but I was there with with my ex, and uh, we were there two months. So it was um, it was a new relationship. So it you know, a lo- lot of adversity, uh, trauma. What? It happened, bro. What? It was so much. All the good stuff. So much, man. All the good. I stuff. can feel it still. Like all those moments of breakups and um torture and screaming and insanity and i can feel it still now man um when was that this was uh 20 oh man it's been a while this is um 2017 i want to say something like that yeah 2017 maybe 2018 ish it's funny it's um it was a fiery one, was it? Oh yeah. Was it fi- fiery? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um, and you know what? Enjoyable. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah. Psst, bro, you know every relationship, I only look at one thing: did I learn something? Yeah. And did I learn something profound about life, about myself, and did I per- give love? Yep. And that's it, right? What What else can you do? You can just give love, and um, the rest is life <laughs> whatever happens um but yeah for me it was um her she had a lot of childhood trauma and uh, as we all do obviously and one of one of the reasons i'm work i'm i'm working out so i saw a bunch of trauma episodes like podcasts with uh, dr paul conti who's a psychiatrist uh who worked on La- lady gaga and other people like to, to fix their issues Lady Gaga actually wrote the foreword to this book. And then uh, I listened to Gabor Mate, who was, uh, Tim, who was on Tim Ferriss' podcast and others. And he, he uses like psychedelics and he comes from the per- Peruvian um, origin. So he's very much into plant medicine. Yep. And so much so that he even got, um, I guess, let go from certain institu- institutions because he was kind of doing rebellious, you know, psychedelic stuff before everyone else was doing it, right? Like, way way before yeah and so um yeah man so i i decided recently to focus on the past right because we we know there's like being in the moment and you know the stoic stuff like present moment is all that matters um it's all it all that matters is here and now i get all that i'm totally with it but the here and now to me cannot be fully lived until stuff here is resolved because whatever trauma exists and whatever we've experienced is in our body somewhere it's in our soul somewhere it's in our mind somewhere so being in touch with it embracing it fully accepting it fully living it however difficult is the only way to live like be in the moment. So, yes, I agree. These things, these things, these things don't go away, and they and they are as well. They're they're things that the um. They're things that we should be grateful for, as well, and as like you said, in terms of lessons. Obviously, childhood trauma or things where they where they, like you would have no influence on them, are very different from things whereby there's been um. Uh, because of your own behavior or your own belief system or your own whatever it is at the time, right? When you're involved in a in a traumatic uh, event or experience, that's where the the learning comes in, and the and it's if you don't learn from it, yeah. that's when you know. Not only have you missed an opportunity to level up, right? You'll still carry more of the baggage of pain with you than you than you than you ought to, right? So being okay with it though right like i don't know and you touched on something great here james it's um not to get rid of trauma right that's not what we're after the only thing we can do is to accept it and embrace it and feel it yep right because it's very possible that the trauma is the biggest gift ever big time 
right? 100%. And it's like the thing carrying you through life. It's like the thing that's giving you meaning. It's like without the trauma, holy shit, what would I be doing? Like I would be lost. I, I'd have no way of orienting myself unless there is pain and suffering. Not always. They're not like chasing pain and suffering, but if it already exists and it's there and you know it's deep because it's not letting you sleep at night or it's not letting you be here and now and experience the beauty of the world and find out what your true gifts are, then, hey, embrace it and, and really go into it. This is going to sound sick, but like, you know, there's some of the things that have happened to me in the course of my life, I would not wish them on anyone. I really would not wish them on anyone. But it's because of the, of that, um, desire to, to learn, strip back the layers, learn about myself at a, a heightened level as a result of it. And, um, the driver isn't to avoid that trauma again, but maybe subconsciously some, somewhere it is in there. But I'm so, honestly, I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful for all of these things, which I wouldn't wish on anyone else. Um, and I, I honestly, I actually, I actually described it this way to somebody um, very shortly at the end of their entrepreneur, very shortly after I'd moved here. And he was, we were talking about um, various, we were again talking about traumas that, that existed and we had some shared experiences about, uh, you know, in relation to that. And, um, cause I feel very lucky to, to sort of, you know, be, be in the, be in the position that, that, that I'm in, in, in my life, it's all as a result of being lucky enough to have suffered these types of traumas at just the right time that innate, that, that just gave me just enough fuel to accelerate my mindset to accelerate my goals for my business, to accelerate my understanding of myself for my, for my personal life. That's what I feel very blessed and very lucky for. Uh, and also having the, the tools and the capability to, um, um, build skills and habits, which, which enables me to, I don't want to use the word cope, but to ground myself if I am aware that certain things are still, um, you know, there within me. So I don't know, it's hard to put into words really. You know, J James, one thing Mike said to you about childhood trauma and, and when you're in a relationship, is he saying that like, find this out early on, like first date, second date? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For, for real, because this is, this is the other thing. So he's obviously, you know, more experienced than myself in um, relationships and all the rest of it. Um, but he said it doesn't happen. It's like, but it almost should. And I've, I, and the reason, this is the thing, like for me, for me dating the last few years, I'm literally just like business, 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 business. I know how it is, man. I know how it is. <laughs> and of course I'd date, but I would not really be taking it, you know, it, it, you know, it's just like, uh, look, you, you've basically got about 70% of me and that's the most you're ever getting. And if you're lucky, if you've got that, and that's the most you're going to get. And, um, and it's only just now I'm like opening my, my heart up to like real things and love a bit more and understanding myself more and what, what I would seek in a partner. Right. Um, but he didn't say necessarily, you know, specifically going, for, yeah, he said like, yeah, day one, day two. Okay. Pretty much, right? Well, what if the girl doesn't and, want, and I'm, I what if she's not ready though to tell you? Because some girls are different personalities, right? They may be introverted. They may be um, a bit shy, right? There's all these factors. So if you are this aggressive and you point blank say, hey, <laughs> what are your traumas and how are you dealing with it? I mean, is that really how you want to start a relationship? in the first or second day? No, but I'm, I'm, you know, it's a, it's a difficult, this is very anecdotal and it's a very poor data set to use me or you as an example, terrible data set. Sure, sure, sure. And I can only speak from my own experience. Whereas now I'm like, okay, like I've done all this stuff and now I'm like kind of lo like looking for someone to, who's going to not only enrich my life, but I'll enrich their life and are you know the the sum of the parts some of the so the sum total is better than the is 
greater than their separate parts. Yes. Right. That's like, yeah, couldn't get my words out, but you know what I mean. Um, it's tricky, isn't it? But I don't, I kind of don't waste any time now. Like, I'm very clear with my intentions. Um, and as, and as well, much like you probably, I'm just making an assumption here, but I'm very logical. But I'm like a massive feeler. Like I'm so like in tune with my like my feelings and like the vibrations of what's going on. So like you, could, I could see you know a, a a great big long line of beautiful women, but it wouldn't necessarily mean anything to me because I until I'd actually you know had had some some level of closeness to see how they speak, how they move, how they interact with other people what they're and it, even just something in like just this feeling inside there's like a vibration that i'm like okay and so I, I i don't even really find myself going on dates or meeting people unless i already have that sense and it's it is or it's something that i'm just in tune with and, and and like i don't bother with any of the dating apps or any of this stuff i'm just like oh this person's interesting to me and I'm going to find out why by having a conversation with them. Um, and w did, would I go flying straight into this? You know, this, this, yeah, I, yeah, it's probably terrible dating advice to go flying straight into like the trauma stuff. But like for myself, like I don't really care. Like I, I'm not interested in surface level. Of course, like there's a, a degree of playfulness and romance. But, and, but um, James, you can give, you can give her in terms of reciprocity, you can give her your trauma and not give her your trauma, but like you can speak speak about you can be vulnerable and through reciprocity maybe she will also open up because she's like oh he's being vulnerable well now maybe i can be vulnerable too so maybe it's more about giving that is probably the approach to take right and inter interestingly i've i've probably have to have found myself doing this more so because when I start to have a level of closeness with it, with anyone, they'll begin to uh, learn about. I'm very open in general. Like I don't. I'm. I've just. Um. Like I don't see that there's a great deal of downside to closing lots of you know things off. But for a couple of years, I was very apprehensive with romantic relationships in 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 terms of not you know just withholding a little bit. But very, very quickly, because um, because my boy is so young, he's just turned three, and throughout that 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 process, it being so fresh, um, I don't think that I do it intentionally. But I would, you know, of course, that's a massive part of my life. So I, I would talk about him and and things like that. And when I start, I, I know that when I do start to feel close to, to somebody, there's something that that there's always like a little switch that I. That I that I still turn this switch off. I don't quite just let everything flow, and um and so you know that's something that I'm personally working on, which shows you know, that I'm still carrying some of this trauma with me. And I think it's this this trust it's this trust thing. Um, but I'm a very you know as a, I'm a very loving man, and but I'm still I feel like I'm able to give love a lot better than I am to to receive love, and and it's almost like I don't I don't want to. I don't know. It's difficult to describe. Yeah, it's difficult to describe. But yeah, it's a funny one, isn't it? It's like when you when you make a date. You know, if you imagine like a dating profile, it's like yeah, great picture. Like oh yeah, funny like quote. It's like this is my trauma, and this is what I did, and now I'm here. You know, it's it's like that's way more useful information for me. Hundred like, percent. Yeah, great. Let's go for dinner. I... <laughs> you know, one one thing, James, that I've always uh, learned is that when in a relationship, you go through adversity by nature, not not trying to put yourself in adversity, which you could do too. You could like on purpose scheme something to like see how the girl would react. But in my experience, there's always been a pretty, pretty, you know, I wouldn't say like catastrophic, but there's been tragedy and there's been adversity. And, and through the adversity, you get a really good uh, roadmap of, hey, if I was to spend the rest of my life with this girl, and if we were to experience catas catastrophic events or some atrocities, I know how she would react. Why? Because with this microcosm 
of this big event, look, she's already reacting this way. And man, that's a great feeling. When you know that the girl is not panicking and she's like nurturing and she's patient and grounded and logical even, right? Not like super crazy going nuts. Um, that is such a great indication that she's mature. Yeah. And that only does come from um, from experience, really, I guess. I suppose some people are calmer than, than others, depending on what where they are in their lives. But yeah, ultimately, you know, it's the most, I, say, I was going to say choosing a partner. Well, you are really choosing, but you're kind of choosing each other. It's not like, oh, well, you know, I, cho I, it's, I get to choose. It's like when, you, when you're, you know, going, going through this process. It's so funny, isn't it, how your the qualities and the, the traits and the things that, that you deem as valuable when you're, or appealing when you're younger, and there's, there's such a greater emphasis um, on more important and, you know, holistically useful uh, life qualities uh, or personal qualities uh, that are, that take precedent and are, and are just like non-negotiables almost, you know? Yes. Yes. Like, I, like I, it's, it sounds ridiculous, right? But like I'll hire based on attitude and, you know, mostly everything else around that is like, yeah, like you, you can kind of like, and it's the same thing. And, um, it's, uh, you just want to see that consistency and, and somebody's just outlook and attitude towards things just being um just like calm right because we all just want we all just want we all just want we all just wanted we're all just seeking joy and we're seeking peace and um and it's it's how can you get to how can you pray or get to those things most consistently with the the path of least resistance and if someone's behaving in, you know, crazy ways or um, illogical, irrational ways, um, that's a big barrier and blocker for your enjoyment of life, which is not good. Yeah. One, one confession I'll make uh, definitely is that I used to be, um, and I still have a little bit of this in me because it's like very innate, I believe, and, and that is... I got a kick out of the irrationality because, um, right? It's like, oh, let me observe this because it's almost like a, the girl becomes a subject. It's like a neuroscience experiment. She's like if in an fMRI and going nuts. And I'm like, okay, this is how humans could be. <laughs> For real, though, like in, in a in a dramatic way, and I have this maybe psychopathic type type mind in in this case where I'm like, I I completely let go of the love and emotion. I mean, it's there. Obviously, I can feel the love. I can feel her pain, but I can also see it in a like a third party. Like, hey, let me get out of this and observe, and observe this this ridiculous situation, and and be like, wow. This is, this is happening. Like her brain did this to her and she doesn't even know how interesting is that. But then you also want to give her, you know, you also want to be empathetic and give the hugs and kisses and listen carefully to what she's saying. Because, you know, half the game is listening, right? And I want to get your thoughts on something, James. Sure. I believe that confessions are... I, I don't want to say the key, or but I think confessions for me are so huge in growth because if I can confess to something, if I can let go of something that I so closely hold to my heart, then it brings me closer to peace for me. And every time I, because I know especially during podcasts when I'm speaking or, or when I'm like just speaking in a conversation with someone, I will get this deep 
like scare fear, right? Like, oh, fuck, can I say this? And 99% of the time I say it. And, and I say it and I feel the fear as I say it. And I'm like, okay, that wasn't so bad. All right, I said that, shit. And then for like three or four days, I'm going to have fear still like, oh my God, my girlfriend's going to listen to this. How is she going to react? How is her trauma going to get, get triggered, right? And then we have these conversations where like, hey, uh, baby, you know, my, I got triggered this way. And I'm like, yeah, I know. And I'm sorry. And, uh, and then, you know, we, we, we talk about it. We have a great conversation about it and we learn from each other about it. So I believe that confessing to whatever shit you've done, this works for me really well, really well, man. And why confessions work in the church, right? Like this is a big part of Christianity. Of course. Cool. And every religion. There's different ways of, of, uh, of confessing things, right? We've all, we're all human. Sure. You know, I, d I don't think there's any, there's a, there must be somewhere. At, at some point in our lives, we've all lied. Uh, we've all stolen something. We've all cheated in some way. That is um, because we're human. We can't not. It's, that's just what we do. If you speak out, you know, if you speak things out loud, because otherwise it's either in, internal internalized in your thoughts, um, and things might rattle around in your brain, right? And that's when it causes you, it probably gives you even more anxiety or it gives you, I don't know, it doesn't mean that you can have this sense of peace, right? Because you know that there's something that you should, uh, that you've not, um, accepted accepted but i think there's different there's different ways of confessing so you know you can confess to yourself you can write you can um tell um very close people things in confidence that you wouldn't necessarily tell other people right um and there's been a whole heap of things in my life certainly that uh if i could turn the clock back and do them again then i then i would um and behaviors that i'm not proud of and people that i've hurt who i've not um who i've not um apologized for hurting them essentially what you you know the goal is to one find a way of coping with something that you've done which you know is wrong which as you alluded to in the catholic church might be by confession to enable you to um relieve you of the mental anguish that might be causing you but of course you can do this by writing or um sharing this with um with uh with other people and um it's funny actually i went to a um i went to a men's circle in bali about it's a few months maybe three months ago now i think it was in january and um there was there's only three of us there sometimes there's more but there's only three of us and it's for um people who are uh, i know this the other the, the others there were you know business owners and there's people that are seeking this sort of like trying to get a deeper understanding of themselves and life really and one of the things that we were that we were doing so would be some meditations and we lit a fire and we spoke about um different uh anxieties and things that were causing us tr mental trauma and were impeding us from progressing in our lives right and uh we shared them in the fire we shared them around the fire so when they were in the fire that was it right and it's you know totally private environment with one total stranger I was with, and then one person who I would, who I had um, befriended here, who um, I'll introduce to him actually. You will love him. Fascinating guy. So I'll definitely make the intro. Really, really cool guy. Like I sometimes, I sometimes feel like I'm quite well, well balanced in my in my thoughts and have a very good understanding of myself and a sense of a sense of how I can improve the world in my own little way. This guy is like a guru. This guy is is literally like on another 
like level, but still super relatable. A British guy, like, like mind blown. And like in a scenario like that, where you're having these confessions and it's super private and so there's no fear of like recrimination or anything like that from these things it's really really powerful and so such such a weight gets lifted from from you Phys physically a weight gets lifted from you because of the the mental burden that you're not carrying anymore so i can totally relate to it um and it's, it's, it's funny again, it, it just sort of comes back to, to relationships again. I've had some of these conversations with people as well. This kind of like men's circle. So I, I could be totally wrong, but I think women are very good at talking to each other. Not necessarily, you know, confessing, you know, like in this, this negative connotation of it, but helping support each other. Um, and I just think guys aren't so good at it. And I don't know if it's a pride thing. I don't know if it's a... It's a it's a, a pride and ego thing, or a um, I don't know, but it, I think it's like so, it's so powerful for 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 men to be able to get together in this relatable way and and um, and share their fears and share their uh, traumas in um, you know uh, in special environments, unusual special unusual environments, and um, I think it's. Uh, it's a really wonderful thing and it's kind of like it's not just not not necessarily confessions let's say but, but traumas it's one of the or stresses in your life and I, this is what i've been examining from a relationship perspective and i think so your other half is is polish as well is she she polish is that right yeah yeah fully polish yeah and like i struggle to date western uh, mindset now because of just that's just where i am in my life right and but even then it's like it's really like do you want to share some of these burdens for me as a man do i want to share these some of these burdens that i might be um wrestling with with my partner possibly yes possibly i just need to go and sit by a group of with a group of men around a fire pit once every two three four weeks and just bam, right? Let's all just get it. Let's all just get it out of ourselves, and then we can be the, um, you know, then we can be the, um, the protector, the provider, the romance, the the the, the strong man that's 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 coping with these things either through himself or through other men collectively. Does that make does that make you a better partner? Does that mean that you're, or does that make you a worse partner? Does it, does it? <laughs> This is what fascinates me. It's like, do you, do you, if that's there, and if men got better at that, would would relation would ultimately would those romantic relationships be better? Because I don't know, I don't know. It's an interesting one, isn't it? Uh, step back and look at what has happened in throughout human history. Is it makes sense because we're not we're no longer walking around with our tribe, right? We as hunter gatherers we would be with our our buddies you know our family our friends with the with however many people hunting you know 100 people or whatever we're going around and then if you need to if you have an issue then guess what everyone knows about it like cuz you're discussing it since you're a kid you're not hiding things from your parents necessarily and people basically know exactly what's going on and and to touch on your 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 basis of women speaking to each other and being good at it, I think it stems from the fact that if you look at all the the verbal skills of girls versus boys, girls always win. Yeah, I mean this is across all the countries, man. Like you look at even even uh, I mean United States, Canada, Poland. Like there's I know I read a study. I think they looked at twelve or fifteen countries. And across the board, they looked at math and verbal. And across the board, verbal, women were better. And this, these are countries where some of the countries, women don't even have as much education as men do, right? I mean, a lot of countries now, women are being educated more than men, right? This is one of the, the, the I don't know if you've looked at, um, there's a guy named Dr. Warren, Warren Farrell, and he wrote the book, The Boy Crisis. 
And in the book, he talks about how men today are not graduating as, as well as women. Women are looking for, you know, someone who's intellectually equal or higher than them. And women are having a hard time. Right. And then you also spoke about the Eastern versus Western mindset. Right. And the last podcast I did with Martha, right, my girlfriend, um, we had this discussion on East versus West, because when I was uh, considering, uh, a, you know, dating and looking for women and all that, one of the mindsets that I had is that Eastern European women are what I desire the most. Yep. Right. Not just because of their look Values. or or like I like that slut. The val. Yeah. The like the gender roles are clear. It's not some confusion of the masculine feminine. Yep. It's, there's a polarization. Thank you. But she argued with me. She argued with me. She said, no, it's not the case. Because for her and, and growing up in Poland and, and you know doing sc going to school in Warsaw, she didn't see that different from the West. So it's possible that as we advance in, 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 in time, the Western influence will, t you know, P Poland's a funny one. So it, it, interestingly, <laughs> so I live in a I live in a three bed villa and with two other entrepreneurs, and um, one of them's a great guy called Rene, Austrian guy, and he ran. He's got has a, um, a tour operating company in Greece called Life Is a Beach Party, and he does the for throughout his like twenties, you know, late twenties, early thirties, was doing all the parties, doing the island hopping doing all of this stuff right and he still has this business now with his partners and he's now setting up a coaching business which is targeted at um um successful men or entrepreneurs or whoever it might be and coaching them on and coaching them specifically on the mindset of eastern european women and how it differs from western women right can coincidentally he um he got in so he got engaged yesterday to his uh, Ukrainian girlfriend, a wonderful celebration. I'll tell you the story just because it's really cool. Um, but they, uh, so we were, so we we live in Changu, and the plan was for it to be in in Uluwatu, so they took a villa there. His friend um, Pete's a musician. They composed a song. He said that it was for a music video for this song, and then set the petals up. She was all dressed up like it was just a music video. So we had the like full production crew there, like super, sounds cheesy, but it wasn't cheesy, super romantic. Like even I was like feeling like a bit emotional, but then I remembered like I'm a dude, so I've got to force my emotions back inside. So I just Hilarious. thrilled them straight into, um, but exactly, right? <laughs> so I was like, no, get back in there, emotions, like don't. Um, so, uh, but no, really like, and he, he is, so he was living in Kiev, but he's lived all over the place. He's living in Norway, living living in Kiev for for a while um, during uh, lockdown and all this. And they got very close. And he's somebody that never thought he would get married ever. He's just like you know, party guy, business guy. That was just his life. Um, and it's this, and he's like very, like very very in tune with his masculine, and it, and it's like she's very in tune with the feminine. And it, this is the this is it's. This is the thing, and I, I know specifically for Warsaw and Poland, his take on it was because he actually said, if you're looking for a wife, I mean, I'm not necessarily looking for a life, a wife, but like, let's let's wait and see. But he's like, consider go to, you know, consider Warsaw because it's a bit more of a blended mindset of not just this Eastern mindset or Western mindset. Whereas if you go into like the Baltics, Lithuania, Latvia, like Ukraine, or or further that way, it's much more of this um, this Eastern mindset of the you know masculine feminine and that and that's what it, it you know but it's a funny one like obviously here in bali as well a lot a lot of the a lot of the western a lot of the the western women have more of an eastern mindset as well and they celebrate the um very much celebrate the mask the, the the masculine um masculine uh energy and traits and they're a lot more feminine as a result i kind of found when i was in in london dating there's this sort of like what's going on here like where's the feminine energy yeah. like we're all so confused it's like and it because it's ingrained in us you know almost like it from when we're growing up it's like don't be too macho 
don't be too this, don't be too that. And it's not about, it's not about, you know, not embracing your masculinity. Um, and, but it, it's, it's, uh, there's a weird thing going on in the West at the moment. There's a very straight, as you, you know, there's this strange thing that's happening where, dare I say it, like, it, it, it's almost like not okay to be like a to be like a to be like a strong man who's who's focused on his goals, focused on himself, knows what he wants, um, is proud is proud of his masculinity. It's it's all it's just it's very strange. It's the... I don't know, man. I don't know. I I I never fell prey to this stuff ever, and I know I've heard of it. Right, I've heard of it from people. I heard of it from uh, um, maybe inside. I, my subconscious mind has been influenced somehow, but consciously, for sure, I never bought into it. Like, I, like, for, like I'll give you a simple example, right? When, when I want to do something that is maybe like toxic masculinity shit, right? Yeah. I, I just do it. I just do it. And, and, and I, and, 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 because to me it's authentic i mean to me it's authentic it's real and it's not um and and i think it's because i don't have anything to lose right most people who buy in to the whatever gender uh, you know the uh, men should not be doing this men should be doing blah 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 i don't have those um like i have nothing to lose because if I were to get uh, canceled or someone was to, um, I don't know, p put me on the news as a misogynist or whatever, it would help my brand almost. <laughs> yeah. Right? Because I'd be like, because like my people know who I am. Yeah. Right? So it's almost like, it's like a good thing almost. So for me, I never kind of, uh, I, I was never, I never had that fear. Right, it, I never you know what's, you know what's fell for that. Joe, you know it's funny. It's like so you've said this is this is what's interesting, right? So you said so you said you kind of just do do what you what you feel like doing, right? And I've kind this is kind of like ties into my philosophy of for how it, we should all live. If you're able to, if you're lucky enough to be able to, you should do exactly what you want, whenever you want to, providing if it brings you joy, providing you're not taking too much from the world or from other people or as long as it's like a like a you know a net zero you know cost really and 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 that and that extends specifically to the happiness and the joy of other people so if you say what makes you happy and you're not and you're not hurting anyone else or making anyone else unhappy it might just be someone else's opinion that it makes that that they might not like your behavior but you've not hurt anyone You've not hurt yourself. You've not hurt anyone else. You've brought yourself joy. You may or may not have brought someone else joy. And if you if you have that if you have that philosophy with every interaction or every choice that you make, and if everyone does that, and providing we you know you broadly agree on what you know is appropriate from, and this is where it gets complicated again from a values perspective or societal values perspective, you've not done anything wrong really. It's just people's opinions. You're you're hurting. You're hurting someone's feelings because the because they of their opinion of something that you've said or thought or done or which it really it, it, it's not irrelevant but it it should almost be largely irrelevant if you were given that you've not not hurt yourself or hurt anyone else. I mean, look at look at uh, history, right? When Galileo uh, t talked about the what he found through the telescope. And it was completely against the church. Guess what? It hurt people's feelings. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so like, um, so he, he of course he didn't like do that to hurt someone, but some people would have thought that. Oh no, he he's just doing that to hurt people. Oh, he's just doing that because he's trying to be naughty or trying to be a rebellious. No, not at all. So it's um, th I think there's just a f there's a. There's something in our heart that we know is out of love and we know it's authentic and we know that if I don't do this, I won't be able to live with myself. 
something will happen. Something will happen to my sleep. Something will happen to my relationships. Yeah. I won't be able to see, look at myself in the mirror unless I tell this truth, right? And as long as you believe this truth and as you very, very well said, you're not hurting anyone, right? Because there are people in the past, like a Hitler and a Stalin and a Mao and, right? And they hurt a lot of people, right? So even if they believed that they were doing this for the better of the world. And look, I am not judging them the right or wrong. I'm just saying that you you have a very good point. As long as you're not taking someone's life, you're not physically abusing someone, mentally abusing someone on purpose, right? But I mean, yeah, man, I I, I don't know. In in terms of morality, I don't know what the I I, I don't know. That's all I can say. It's this blurring of the lines in the West of the um, societal expectations of both men and women that just doesn't exist in, in other cultures. And it had taken me, it had taken me a while to sort of realize that when I was sort of like fleetingly dating in London, I was just kind of like, this is not, this is not what I'm looking for. This is not, but even just like as a, as a uh, as a place for me to um to live but as a place to fight to find a partner it was just not um highly unlikely for it to ever be appropriate that being said you know i've not fully um dived into the uh the other side of the of the coin yet right you know i'm sure there's um there are different um, learnings, you know, and things things to understand of the differences for that type of relationship with a um, with a with an Eastern European or an Eastern mindset woman in general. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see where we we'll see where we go. But um, but yeah, you seem very happy. one day at a time. You seem very happy. I, I honestly consider myself lucky because I was, when I came to Tulum, my, literally my goal was to scale the business. And I literally told the universe, like I sat down and I had a conversation with the universe and I said, look, I'm going to Tulum to scale my business. Now, I would like to have a girl who goes on this journey with me. She is my partner in crime as we scale Afro D, right? That was literally what I told the universe. And I said, look, the girl has to be aligned with my workaholism, <laughs> right? She has to be aligned with me going on my path, not take me away from the path because some girls do. Yeah. And dude, my first day in Tulum, I met her. Amazing. Yeah, dude. So it was like, um, and obviously it wasn't just like some uh, smooth, you know, Cinderella story type thing. There was ups and downs. There's always hiccups and bumps and all great things though. All great. And, um, and, and that, like having the, the love is the key to whenever an obstacle happens, I literally like, ha, 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 this will be interesting. Like, this is what you're going to throw at me? This is easy because we got love. Yeah. It seems that now we are like, a, we have a shield of love, right? So any obstacle, problem, hiccup, it's like, we got this. Challenge accepted. Yeah. And we make it fun. And it's this understanding. And, and you know, James, there's also an intellectual equality, like an intellectual mind mixing, right? That's important. Like the mergers of intellectuals. Because, because she is, uh, she trained in vet medicine, right? So she comes from a very like academic background, like a great, good student, you know, got all the good grades, like 
and and you know her her mom is very much like an intellectual read all the dostoevsky tolstoy all those books right so it's like she comes from an intellectual family right and i am also i also come from an intellectual family so when we have this merger it makes sense but i didn't know that on our first date right until and and this was interesting how your friend said um the trauma stuff, right? On our first date in, in Tulum, we had like a three to four hour conversation. And dude, we went deep. Yeah. Like deep, hardcore. But it wasn't discussions of trauma. It was discussions of what gives us awe. Wow. Like, what are we like, what the fuck is this about? Like I didn't have to hide or sort of not disclose certain things. I was just very open. And it was to the extent where I, I remember this one time I was, you know, I always have this uh, thought. I have it even now. It's like, what the hell is all this, right? Like this, this concept of being that we are here, like somehow I'm, I have a body, right? Like. This is weird, right? It's like fucking weird shit. And like we're on a planet and supposedly there's like a sun and a moon and planets. Like what the fuck? Really? This is the, the world? And that sort of mind she also has, right? So she also said this. She's like, dude, I was, uh, I was thinking about this when I was a kid and like gave me anxiety, right? Like holy. So I was like, okay. We have similar things that make us say, wow, like give us things that give us chills are the same thing. And, and that allowed me to see, okay, the conversations are going to be great with this one, right? Because what is life, right? Life is, it's not just, uh, about like going to work and taking care of the kids. No, it's about communication. Yeah. Connection to, to a higher, higher being, to a higher power, to, to something that's potential, but this we're is, not this, there yet. Okay. So this is what I mean. Remember I said like about vibrations, right? And, and so you, and so you, you've picked up on like a, like a, a verbal, a ver, a visual trigger by how she is presenting herself while she's verbalizing her thoughts to you. And you're probably picking up on some, some pheromones and some other smells to be like, okay, and then there's, there's all of these things that like activating in, in your head. You're like, okay, right. This is cool. But I also really love what she's saying. I really love the way that basically I want to see that someone's mind works like, well, because ultimately we're all going to, you know, sh shrivel up and get old and kind of be a bit sucky at some point. Right. So it's like, okay, like what's the deal in terms of like, how, what's the, what's the, how is their mind, how is their mind working? What are the shared common goals that we have? And like, that is like entry, like that's like entry level, right? That is entry level. But this is what I'm saying. Like, and I sound nice. Hey, I am a bit of a hippie, like, let's be honest, but it's like, like what, what, like what frequency are you vibrating on? Cause I feel like I can even just like feel it in someone. And you know, I said before, I'm like, I don't give, I don't even care. Like you could have like this, the most, all these most beautiful, physically beautiful women in the world all lined up. And I'm like, nah, like it, it doesn't mean, it doesn't mean, it doesn't mean it. It's obviously like I'm a man. So it means it's, it's important, but it's like, what's the, what's the frequency that's coming off of this person? And it's like a different cue. It's like a different cue that you don't not quite sure what it is, but you're, it's like the universe is saying to you, like, this is the right thing for you to do. And you, like you said, when you were, before you went to Tulum and you intuitively, you asked the universe and guess what? The universe delivered for you. Sometimes it doesn't, sometimes that doesn't, you know, happen right away. Sometimes you have to keep asking. Sometimes there might be some hurdles that you have, have to overcome until, um, you're able to receive what you what you perceive that you want but I'm a, I'm a big believer in well I, as well I you know not only I wouldn't say I necessarily ask the universe for things um 
but I regularly ask the universe to to keep guiding me, and I and I regularly um, praise myself internally for following what the universe wants me to do. Re so I'm like I've got this like reinforcement loop where I'm like I'm asking not necessarily that, but I'm kind of asking the universe, okay, like these are the things that I th that are right for me, or my perception of what's right for me. And then I'm also got like this feedback loop where I'm, I'm rewarding myself positively, like um, that I'm <sighs> for being strong enough to just follow with it, you know, because that takes strength. So, so just keep going with to keep going with the um, with something or a decision that might not be yours, but you're being guided in a particular way, right? It takes it takes strength. Um, Obviously, some people just do things blindly, but yourself, much like me, if you're someone that's like very, very logical and rational, and it takes a, a bit more of a okay, well, um, I can, I can, we can let the we we can trust the universe now. The universe is good for us if we tr if we let if we don't fight the universe. The universe is good for us. So it's very hard to find people that you're on that on that wavelength with, right? And I'm kind of in the same position as you now, where you're like, okay. I'm going to go to the and scale. We're at this point now business-wise where I'm like, okay, we can kind of go as big as we want with this, right? Like really big. Having had teammates, should we say, that would not have been appropriate previously, romantic teammates without naming any names that may not have been appropriate previously, I feel like... The universe is now a bit like, oh, how about this person? Oh, how about that person? Like, oh, um, and it, the, it, I'm seeing more and more of the, of the, the types of traits and and values in people that I would perceive to be really important for, um, for what I want to achieve for my personal goals, the business goals, and like zooming out, not like five years, ten years, twenty years, thirty years the impact that I would like to be able to have on um, on the world from a legacy perspective in terms of the ways that, um, that I see things and, and want to share things and want to create joy and love and make people feel um, happier, um, basically. It's really important. It's like the most important choice that you can make in your life, right? Who, you, who you're choosing as your as your as your partner um so that's kind of like when I, whilst i'm here now there's so there's so much that we can do from like a brand perspective in terms of the connectedness to nature the the spirituality that just runs throughout the whole island you're in this like living breathing culture that is got this clash with the like a clash like a splash of the west not a clash like a splash with like the west but still i like, really like firmly um uh has deep rooted connections to their own culture as well it's like it i do love i just love it here and i and like i know that um particularly with this brand like we can do some really special things here and that will really elevate Elevate the elevate the brand, elevate me, elevate my profile to be able to um, springboard the business, and whilst also very very demonstrably and um, and uh, above what what might be considered normal, support local communities whilst we're here. That's so like super super important for me. Awesome. The thing that I find tricky is like this, 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 like I'm still in this like transition fate from being like a lone wolf. I'm like, no, like I got this. Like I, I, I got this. And it's like, no, you're like, maybe I want like a love shield, like Farhan, can I have a love shield as well, please? Like that might be good. Maybe that'll be like a cool thing for everyone to have. Like, we're well, just like lone wolf, just like, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I do want to talk to you about the, the, the entrepreneurship aspect too, because Take me back to the time when you first had this idea of ethical betting. And I and I know firsthand because I use 
uh, ethical betting. I've been using it since you sent it to me years ago, or at least like a year and a half ago. Yeah. And uh, my parents use it. My my brother uses it. You know, my brother and his family use it. So, and I love it, man. Like I know whenever we move to a new place, we have the the sheets and the pillowcases and stuff like in a in the cute little bags, and um, and then you know the 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 shitty stuff will be there. You know what the the landlord gave us, and then we have to like take that out and put your stuff on there. And I really look forward to doing that because the way. It, I don't know all the, the, the science behind it, you, you know better, but like the way it feels and the silk, you know, how silky it is and how, um, how well you can sleep on it and, and the way it feels towards your skin. And yeah, man, it's, it's a, it's a great, great product. Yeah. It's a great product. I can, I can tell you firsthand, uh, from my experience. And I want to ask you like, what, what was the um, tipping point or what was that transformation which allowed you to have this idea? Because for me, my business idea stemmed from a problem that I had personally um, and a, a fear, insecurity, weakness, whatever you want to call it. That transformation plan started my business, right? It was like the obstacle is the way. Um, how was your, like that, that, that tipping point, that initiation for ethical betting? It's a, it's a funny one actually, because this is going to sound crazy, right? I always wanted to do something amazing, but I just never knew what it would be. And I, I knew I was going to do something amazing. I just always knew I'm going to do this amazing thing, but you kind of get like deviated from your, from your path, right? And you don't, you know, you don't necessarily know what. What you might want to do and to be honest with you you know i used to i used to play poker online i thought well, i'll play i thought i'll play poker and uh when i was well, you know when i was first finished studying i used to, used to travel used to play poker save money and travel with my with my poker winnings right um in between like semester bro i i know exact i know exactly how you feel i i lived in vegas for a year and i was a degenerate poker player so I guess. there we go perfect I thought, you know, I, I think I quite like to be. At one point, I was like, I just want to be a scuba diver instructor. I quite like doing scuba diving. And I met. I thought, no, I didn't do that. And I remember I was away for a while, and I'd finished my studies, and and I didn't know what it was that I wanted to do. And so I went down the accountancy route. So I was like, it gives me a foundation, right? It didn't align to, you know, I studied economics and uh, it, 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 throughout. I didn't ever really study too hard. I just kind of like would pass exams and kind of like, I didn't really know. I was just very interested in having fun, basically. I was like, how can I maximize my fun in the world? Um, and then ended up thinking, I don't really want to do this. Like, I don't, you know, this isn't really for me. Um, and at the time I thought, well, what pays the most money? So then I was like looking at banks. I went, went into banking and I did that for, for far 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 too long and it really unsettled me and disturbed my disturbed my peace i like to think that you can do things you can do un unlimited things with with your life but this, the structure of how you know turning up at this time and doing and doing this and doing this work and you must do this many years before you can do this and the politics and the, and the nonsense and the knowing what the best thing to do is but not being able to execute on it because everything takes months to make a decision and nobody wants to be accountable for what they're doing and blah 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 um so i was doing that for years and and it it never really brought me any joy i used to make very good money and buy things that i didn't need or want and not not live every day with with joy like you know so it's you know i'm not sure i'm not sure if you'll um stay at the recording time but it's it's friday and it's now whatever it might be half, half seven on a friday i'll probably work through till midnight tonight train tomorrow morning saturday morning um then i'll work on saturday i'll work on but it's not work and people say well how much how much work do you do i'm like i kind of do quite a lot of work but i'm kind of like not really working because like i love it <laughs> anyway long way of answering the question um i had uh one brand with an x that was 
uh, that got me into seeing that e-commerce was a way of um, providing, uh, to begin with, supplementary income, but also find it very interesting because it's very data-driven and you have to understand your customers. And it's cool, like, creating products and getting them to people and making people feel good, right? It would have been very scalable, but not scalable enough. And fundamentally, it was not, didn't really do anything for anyone. It wasn't solving any problems. It was just, like, mostly, like, fashion items and it's fairly standard stuff. And it's like, well, it's not really... It doesn't really bring me any any joy. It doesn't it doesn't align to my values and my and my what I believe my purpose to be for for what I could the impact I can have on the world. And funnily enough, that when that, that company was starting about twenty nineteen, after about a year, I thought this is great. Like I'm learning all about this stuff. So it, wouldn't it be wonderful if you could start a business that um, would just create more joy and kindness and love in the world, right? And I thought, well, I don't have enough money to do to start that, to pay all people to do this. And I don't know what I don't know what it would be. I don't know what even know what the idea would be. And I remember speaking to some of the contractors we had at the time, being like, look, I've got this idea. Sounds, you know, but we're gonna spread more kindness in the world with business. I don't know what the business is, but I'm gonna need you all to work for free on this. And like one by one, they were just like, No. No. Like, no, I'm not gonna I'm like, all right, okay. So I, so I kind of but it was kind of like there in my head. And I think this is a result of being exposed to uh, an environment and a uh, every day doing something that I knew that didn't bring me any joy in in uh, financial services feeling that there was just this people were not giving themselves enough love they were not giving other people enough love they were not showing showing themselves kindness they were not showing other people kindness and that that was like very important for me for that to be like underpin what we would do anyway like chronologically this is a total mess so either your editors will be really good or if anyone is actually genuinely interested they'll probably have to listen to it about three times until they can piece it together but so there was the brand there was the brand with the with my ex i then there was then had two others so i was one doing like merchandise for youtubers and then another one with um, a boutique owner in london and again i was like i don't really know it doesn't really align to what i want to do anyway Sleep has always been something which has, has been a bit of a, had historically been a bit of a problem for me. I'd always slept very late, like gone to sleep very late and, and not slept well. I'd never really prioritized it as a, uh, a feature of, a very important feature of self-care that enables you to perform to your maximum um, mentally, physically, emotionally, be there for people, right? So, so sleep became increasingly important for me. So I, started, I actually started to research other companies that were doing interesting things in the sleep space with different textiles and um, looked at um, uh, linen and looked at organic cotton and looked at bamboo, of course, and came across eucalyptus. And the more research that I did into eucalyptus and not only its benefits in terms of the uplifting quality of sleep, um, that you get because of it uh, being very breathable in nature, uh, naturally hypoallergenic, feels incredibly soft and smooth on your skin, super hygienic. I'm like, why is everyone not sleeping in this stuff? And it's because it's an expensive, it's an expensive textile, right? It's um, compared to, and it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a slightly different care process, which people might not be accustomed to. And it's mostly it's a it's a, a price based decision, right? So it's not something that everybody would would use. It's an ex, you know expensive raw material. But I saw what some companies were doing in Australia and what they were doing in in the US, and I thought this is amazing. But I think we can do it better. But I didn't know whether the whether the concept would work in the UK primarily as a as a as a target market, and. Um, so this was pre iOS 14 for any of the nerds out there or other brand owners. This is pre this is a pre iOS 14. So I was like, great, like we we're like we've we've got like some um, we've got some um, got some products. So we went in with about I think 40 or 50 grand's worth of of product at cost. And you know, just Facebook marketing back in the day pre iOS, like stick up a photo with some annotations, like you're good to go. Um, so we did the proof of concept. I was like, oh, great, you know, fantastic. It works. There's a, there's a market for this in the UK. Um, we're getting very, very, you know, very good feedback from customers on the product, et cetera. Um, 
and this was in the back end of 2020 and then lots of the products for the v1 started failing basically had to write off a lot of the inventory was donated to um care homes and you know but this is the thing right i was like damn i'm like so i've now like i'm now like let's call it 50k down and like six or nine months down in from a, from a business perspective of where we where we wanted to be had to re-establish all new supply chains why did it fail what happened what was the product yeah so so interestingly th there was a chemical that was that was not i need to look up the name of it there was a, there was something that was not used in the treatment process of it which meant that it deteriorated and, and piled far too quickly now what 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 we re what we realized so actually i'm not sure if you've heard you, you, may, you may have heard like, like the white company they're in the us huge um they're huge in uh the UK and, and Europe, and they are, uh, they supply mostly, then they started with, they started as like a mail order place, catalog place, and they're huge, like multi, multi-billion, I think now they do in, in revenue. Um, but they specialize in bedding as well as other homewares essentials, pretty high end. I found their supplier in Portugal and they were at the time, they were 99 years old, so presumably now 101. Um, it's with my excellent mathematics skills, um, but they, so it's third generation, like family of, of weavers and finishers. And I was like, great, these guys can do it. And they're like, yeah, but we've not worked with your fabric before. And I'm like, don't worry about that. Like you're the experts, like you'll figure it out. So, and they didn't figure it out. Um, and what, this is the other thing that I think, you know, it's as interesting as you, as you go through this type of business and I'm looking to uh, possibly like moving some of the production to um to certainly indonesia uh possibly bali for and try and service the markets more closely to where you're going to be uh your end user customer is uh of course it takes more time it takes more money but it's kind of feels like the right thing to do um but it was this, these guys were buying in the yarn and then weaving the the um sorry buying yeah buying in yeah buying it in and, and doing all of the finishing themselves from from portugal whereas I don't think that they knew how to do the weaving process and finishing process correctly there. And this is what we found since, because I originally wanted to manufacture in the UK. No one would go near it because um, it's just a, from a cost perspective. And it, it, they were just like, no, like you can't. And there was no money to obviously as a startup, you can't set up your own production facility. Um, but in the subcontinent, they're much, much more used to handling this type of fabric because they're used to working with um bamboo which is again like a you know a lyocell uh fabric a wood a wood pulp right mushed up into wood pulp to create to create the fiber and again in china very very good at making this stuff they're used to working with silk um famous for their silk trade and they just know how to do to make this type of product very very well we had yeah we had we had some some big product setbacks and it's it's mostly from a timing perspective but you know you learn this stuff and we've got a very robust supply chain now and like you know if we were to manufacture here like i wouldn't have them do the weaving uh necessarily in jakarta or indonesia possibly i've not done the research on it yet i'd probably be getting the by you know getting the the fabric in on the roll and doing but doing the finishing here so at least you're having a touch point with the the country with which you're uh, engaging with right um so again yeah great st stimulus for the economy the, the economy that you'd be serving although it would mostly be the expat as well as the expat community in somewhere like bali for instance as well as um residences villas hotels blah blah um but also purely from a business perspective you know um it's much easier on the cash flow if you are um transporting and st storing big rolls of your raw material and then calling it off to finish closer to the um uh closer to the place where it needs to be uh closer to the to the customer and the end user really so but it's, it's the whole thing's just like total evolution constantly as you as you know um and we're getting like we are really really getting there now we're making some amazing inroads we've launched um an incredible and this is what I mean, like, it's so easy to, to like, like very thoughtfully design your products and how, and how you go about doing it. it just takes like a, li a little bit of elevation of thought and a little bit more work or risk or whatever it might be. Um, 
Yeah. So we're now, we're now making mattresses, which are made in the UK, handmade, but, you know, high-end luxury mattress would typically, you know, have things such as wool or um, cashmere or silk as their comfort layers, um, as well as like cotton and pocket, pocket sprung mattresses are generally the best mattresses. Some people have latex and things like this, but really you want pocket sprung. Um, and ours have 7,000 pocket springs, but if you use 30% less steel in the springs, we'll take the old mattress away and we'll recycle it for them. But we'll replace these traditional layers that you would have in a mattress um, with things such as co uh, coconut, uh, hemp, um, bamboo. Uh, we have non-dyed organic cotton on the outside of the mattress. Even like the glue, rather than using like a glue, we use like a corn-based, um, corn, like a, I think it's called a, a PLA, but it's a, it's a glue that's like a reduced cornstarch, basically. Uh, the polyesters in there are, are used uh, are from a fabric. Um, it's called Reprieve Our Ocean, which is either directly recycled ocean waste, which could be bottles or fishing nets or things that are trawled out of the ocean directly or things that are at extremely high risk of ending up in the ocean. And this is what I mean. It's just like this little little bit of extra thought right not everybody will feel connected to that type of product but the whole thing is a loop the type the types of people who become our customers are very connected to wanting to feel that they are in whatever small way it might be having minimizing their impact as well as increasing their um ability to to sleep well and therefore present themselves better romantically academically professionally um whatever it might be yeah i mean i lo i love i love all our products i love all our products like i love i love my business so much like so much bro i oh god um so yeah i'm just super excited about what the future holds and it's like there's, there's so much we can do from a, like a product dev perspective like we're looking at towels and robes and um like I'm coming across things all the time and yeah, like this is where it gets, like this is where it gets really crazy though. Right. So, cause things are like ramping quickly. We've, but we've not even scratched the surface and we've only really gone after one geography and, but I feel like we're getting to this point where we're just like getting the niche or niche. If you're watching in America nailed, um, that's for getting the niche nailed. And um, I just can't wait just, just to see where it goes and start and just keep rolling out, rolling it out. And I just have just such a passion for going that to that extra level of detail to give to give to make people feel good about what they're sleeping in. And show them a little bit of love throughout the customer journey after you after after they've, you know, throughout the customer journey afterwards giving them sleep tips you know a lot of what i'm going to be doing now is once we you know more of the running of the running of the business is handed off to um handed off transitioned you know to 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 very very capable people to be able to do i would like to be able to start to speak more about people to people about you know mindset and sleep specifically and self-care and the importance of having proper sleep rituals and looking forward to 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 that as as a really key part of your and you know a key um cornerstone of a happy life as much as exercise and nutrition is really like how do you how do you how do you sleep well what does that look like for you and a lot of it is you know it's psychological a lot of it is psychological if you know of course, that like we have different preferences of, of levels of comfort for pillows and mattresses and bed sheets and all of these things. Um, but a lot of it comes down to like rituals and the psychology of thinking. I'm being actively being really kind to myself by sleeping at this time and waking up at this time, and that's what's good for me. And knowing that that's what's good for you, but being consistent and being disciplined with it, you know. Um, and you know, this is this is where I, you know. This is where I can create value in the world is by helping people realize these things and improve people's lives as, as a result of it. And if you make more good men as a result of your products, which are unbelievable, by the way, and uh, 
I've been a proponent of using them for, for ages now. Yeah, again, like, since we met. Since we met. And funnily enough, I was talking to someone in Body Factory in the pool, and he was complaining that he'd run out. I was like, Afro D? I was like, yeah, I know that guy. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, I'll sit. I'll get I got this. I hold my, hold my beer. I got this. <laughs> but I can, you're, you're, you know, your turning point is like you want to help men become the best version of themselves and, um, and naturally boost their, um, uh, testosterone levels. And, and a lot of it again is, is this psychology of being in this mindset of so much about mindset, being in this mindset of, okay, this is what we're doing now. We've, I've, we have our we have our sleep products, which will help supplement your um, propensity to an ability to sleep well. And as much as your your products are, they're a supplement which must be part of a wider process in order for you to um, to reach your. Again, it's all about maximizing your potential as a human, right? Like, why would you not want to do that? So, yeah, I love it. I love it. What and one this is the really crazy bit, right? This is where this is where it gets wild. So when I when I bought the domain ethicalbedding.com, I'm like, great, like these 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 are the values that we're gonna go by. We're gonna have a transparent supply chain, we're gonna pay everyone appropriately throughout the process, we're gonna know exactly what goes into them, we're gonna just be, you know, just use all plant based when we can. Every little like little product detail, little little product details, packaging, everything, right? But I, I also bought another, let's say, fifty or hundred domains over the course of um <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. For real, over the course of like that next like three years or something. So I bought like ethical, anything you think of pretty much dot com. Right. Belongs to me. The intention, the intention being, you know, from a let's zoom out 10 years, 20 years, you know, people are, people are sleeping in these incredible products every night and they understand the values of the business. They have a closer affinity to me as my profile grows, this, this being the intention. You can do this with, um, you know, things that you cook with. You can do this with swimwear. We can do roll into bathroom stuff very easily. Um, we can roll into any sort of homewares, anything for the mountain, anything for skiing, for instance, or it's, it's you know, basic menswear, womenswear. Um, and, you know, the, 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 the values in the ethos will remain exactly the same. You see what goes in, you see what comes out. We'll support sustainability charities throughout. We'll support local communities where, wherever we can. Um, and I just think it's, you know, a much better, it's like a philosophy that, 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 if, I, that I just want to live my life by, right? You take what you take, take what you need and, and do it in like the least, um, you know, as humans from the, from the second that we are, we're, we're born and breathe and we're consuming and we're destructive to the earth. Right. And so let's just try and like, do the best we can with what we've got, uh, to, you know, the best scientific knowledge that we have right now of, of these products. And bro, I can't wait to do eucalyptus pants. What were eucalyptus like underwear? But, but oh, I, I, it, really? It's so good because of the, the breathability qualities. It's really good for your, um, obviously for your, your balls, um, blended with a little bit of elastane. You get a nice, if you get a nice cut of the, of the brief or the boxer, it's a one, you know, a wonderful product, you know, I think. And it's things like this. There's all sorts of stuff that you can that you can um, that you can create with all sorts of different textiles, if they're used appropriately. And we've fallen into this habit as a society and as humans of just making everything from cotton because it's the right thing. That's what we do. And you know, oh, well, po oh but of course, polyester, right? And again, there's different types of poly. We use we use some polyester. We use. We use recycled polyesters, right? And there's diff there's different there's different types of things that you can there's different grades that you can use, right? Um, but there's no need to use a virgin uh, a virgin polyester; it's just not necessary. And again, you know, these are the things with cotton, right? That people don't understand, and everyone uses cotton. Um, it's unavoidable. Um, if it's organic cotton, it, it doesn't use any herbicides or pesticides. A typical a typical cotton would have something like um, you know two two thousand toxic chemicals that might be used in the in the production process. Right? It could be about five percent of the world's farmable land. Between three and five percent, maybe, of the world's farmable land is used in cotton production. It needn't be. 
you know, contrast that to eucalyptus, it's grown on non-farmable land, arable land in very like strange environments where nothing else will grow in just the one, you know, again, there's different grades of eucalyptus. Has it grown in, um, responsibly managed, well-governed biodiverse forests? They're, uh, harvested, they're not uprooted, you know, it's like, let's use the land that we've got with the things that, that want to be there whilst <laughs> humans wanting to clothe, our, clothe ourselves in certain things. It's like, why don't we use stuff that is more, you know, appropriate? Um, but yeah, I mean, huge amounts of water go into producing cotton, way more energy goes into producing cotton. It's like, but we all use cotton. I'm assuming your shirt is cotton, but I'm assuming it's a nice shirt and you'll get a lot of use out of this, right? And we all, that's just what, this is because we're what, it's what we're used to, right? Um, but I'm also like just a huge proponent of buying, like just buy well, buy really well, buy really good stuff and enjoy it and love it. Um, and it, you know, I, I'm just, this, the, this whole sort of fast fashion and throwaway culture that we have is, I find it very disturbing. Um, as somebody that bumbles around with a, you know, a small bag of stuff that just lasts as long as it needs to last and then gets replaced and, you know, so it's, um, and it's these small incremental things, right? So I'm just one person and, you know, we, however many thousands of customers that we, we would, you know, we would impact over the course of the life cycle of the business so far and as it grows, but this is the thing, it's more than just what the direct impact is at a unit level for what you're doing. What I would like to try and do is to ingrain this sort of like a more conscious mindset in people about what they're consuming in terms of their homewares, what they're clothing themselves in. Um, again, like things like their food, but I'm just a bit, I'm really rambling now, but what you eat, what you're putting into your body, what media you're consuming, what you're thinking, what you're saying, like it's, Life, is, life isn't that complicated, right? And we as humans, we tend to want to take too much and we should, we should want to take less and we should want to try and amplify ourselves with less. And that's a much easier life. That's a much more beautiful life. It really is. Um, so, yeah. That was a lot of rambling there, wasn't it? It was like that. It's, it's like, what's your elevator? What's your elevator pitch? And I'm like, forty five minutes later. Nah. <laughs> how, how many stories is this elevator? First of all, like, <laughs> let's hope we're at one of the tallest buildings. What is it called? Um, the Burj. I don't know, man. It, yeah, yeah. Is that still the tallest? I think it's the. Yeah, I think so. Unless there's another one going. Oh man, still the tallest. Wow. I thought they were building something in Malaysia that was like gonna beat it. I don't know if they've built it yet. Nature isn't for everyone. I love it. I love it. Like, I love it. I love that it can activate all your senses. Like, there's nothing in the world. I just went downstairs just there um, to get a glass of water. And it had been raining and you can smell, you can smell the petrichor and this like jungly rainforest smell. And I'm looking around and there's like dragon fruit in the bowl and bananas and uh, you know, all this fresh local, local produce that I'm like, th this is what n nature, the world that we are lucky enough to be on and enjoying and activates all our senses in the most unbelievable ways. It feeds us, it nourishes us. It gives us beauty, the smells, the feeling of water on your skin, the feeling of wind through your hair more so mine than yours more i would imagine but it's the, it's it's um it's wonderful it's absolutely it really is like beautiful and inspiring and incredible and this is what i mean in terms of you know you know i'm big into to mindfulness and i sometimes as you know when when you're scaling a business you, you really have, you have to have moments for yourself, right? You have to. And if I, if I take 
sometimes just take those for instance if i'm in london i'll take it in battersea park i'll sit on a bench i'll go for a walk i'll sit on the bench i'll listen to the birds i'll find a private place i'll watch the i'll watch the sky i'll watch the trees the leaves move in the trees I'll, I'll see like the eco like the little mini sort of ecosystem of the birds and how they're oh like the geese are fighting with the swans and the and this and that and then and whatever's going on and i love it i just absolutely love it and it doesn't cost anything the only cost of it is that you have to be mindful in terms of your consumption and your protection of it that's the only cost and so it, i have this like conflicting thing whereby I'm producing things to sell to people and the justification to myself is that I'm doing it in the lowest impact way possible which ultimately I believe products products that the sorts of products that I'm designing and delivering may eventually even get to the point where they're being licensed right and like this is like the go to this is like the go to way of doing this is the best way of doing this product basically right um maybe maybe not don't know but it, the, there'll be a we're just very early in this in the wave of of this type of thing happening with the the beauty of nature everywhere and, and all the, these these nourishing things that it does for us as humans and we're we're so hell-bent on not looking after it it's very disturbing it's very disturbing and so I, that really is a big influence for me. What are some of the what are some of the ways that you've seen us destroying nature? What stands out? Predominantly, I, you know, I, there's this there's this glut of of overconsumption in general, right? People get dopamine hit when they buy stuff, and that we buy way too much stuff, and we produce stuff that we just don't need all the time. Um, there's a, a huge amount of of overuse of of plastics, colossal amount of overuse of plastics. Um, which people are start slowly waking up to. I've seen, you know, you, there's people that, they, but this stuff will become mainstream in five or ten years. Like straws made out of things like whatever, you know, corn or um, um, or uh, you know, sets coconuts or whatever it might be, like edibles type of straws or edible cutleries or edible plates or things like this. And it's like you can do it, particularly, you know, why why would you not do that? But this. Even like here in Bali, you know, the Philippines was particularly bad. And this we're talking maybe about 15 years ago when I was there in terms of like the, the, the amount of plastics and junk everywhere. And um, I see I see a lot of that. I, I You know, we all move around. We all, we, we all move around. We all travel. We all have a carbon footprint. Like, are we like being accountable and, and understanding what that is and personally offsetting it? Like, I hope we all are. Like, I am. Um, I make sure that we are as a company. And it's like so. J just to take a James for plastic. I mean, I know about BPA and how it affects men's hormones and all that. Yeah. But from an from a Earth perspective, how exactly or do we know what plastic? impact like the oceans and um perhaps the i don't know the, the the earth itself like the the actual dirt or the grass or like or the air w what is plastic i get it from a human health perspective especially men's hormones but how would it impact the earth like okay so there's a lot of plastic so what yeah i hear you i suppose it, it impacts the, yeah i suppose it impacts the beauty of the earth it, it visibly how it would look but I'm, I'm guessing it gets, it gets into ecosystems, right? It gets into it would destroy, it might destroy reefs. It might uh, start destroying certain types of um, certain types of um, uh, parts of the ocean, parts of parts of the land. Block up. It might uh, cause like you know blockages in natural waterways or ecosystems, which. If it wasn't there, it wouldn't do it right at all. Um, but it, it's 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 not nat it's not natural. It shouldn't be there. It's not going to be up. It will biodegrade eventually, but not at a rate at which it should. And it's it's usually um, 
Yeah, there's good again, like there's good plastics and there's and there's bad plastics, and you know you can get plastics made from recycled plastics. You can get plastics which are recyclable or unrecyclable, and like there is a necessity for them because of the way that we've stretched our lives and the way that we consume and transport goods around the world, and there is absolutely a necessity for it. But there there isn't always, and it's also about just having like this little bit of mindfulness about um about how about how we about how we um how we use them like i take a i, t- I take a coolie a, a bottle around with me everywhere right with water 750 milliliters i don't know what that is in um american um non-metric unfortunately um call it a gallon half a gallon um so but i'll take that around with me everywhere and keep my water cool and i it's funny, like little things like this, like annoy me. So I'll go to this. I have one spa that I go to here, and I go once a week for ninety minutes. I take thirty minute foot massage and a sixty minute body massage, and that's like one of my uh, self care rituals, and it's really good for me. And every time they offer me when I when I go there, they offer me um, a bottle of water in like the tiniest little bottle of water like this, and like some sweets in a plastic. I'm like, oh no, I'm okay. And even if I was like really thirsty, I'd be like, why have they made that water so small? Like. It, just like put a water butt there and I'll take a paper cup with some water, right? It's like little, little things like that. But obviously, like it takes energy to produce this. It takes energy to destroy it. You can now turn plastics into different types of, um, different types of, um, of energy, right? For, and use it for fuel. Like this, this technology is, is under, I can't remember the name of it. This technology is underway. But it's, it's not just, it's not just, it's not just, um, it's not just plastics. It's it's this. These are the other issues that I see with the world, right? We all seem to be hell bent on 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 overconsumption in general, and I don't I don't know why. And I think it's because I'm someone that's that's realised I'm happier with less, and so I prefer simplicity. I'm very very happy because I just don't get distracted in my thoughts. But people like to seem to like to accumulate stuff just accumulate stuff it's like well, why have you why like what for like is it, the energy gets why do you think gets... that is james like what is happening to the just yesterday i was talking to my dad and uh, i told him dad uh look to subtract things from your life not add things i said it specifically to my dad because we had a discussion he was doing certain things my mom was like hey you know dad's doing this i'm like dude stop it like don't add stuff to your life Right, my dad's now 70, uh, 71, and um, he just, uh, he'll be 70, no, he he will be 71 this year. Um, And so it's like, I understand this fully, the minimalistic lifestyle. I've I've lived it for for many years. Yeah. But what I see with other people is that there is something missing, whether it be connection or something that that grounds them to their own their own soul some some self love something that is letting them feel that they are enough without the other stuff but when you live in a society in which you are convinced that you are not enough and you are convinced that what you have in terms of your body and mind is all you need yep when someone convinces you of that, then guess what? You're going to go on Instagram and, and infinitely scroll, right? You're going to go and you're going to eat sugar. You're going to, you're going to get the cookies, right? You're going to go get the, the, the new, newest iPhone or the newest uh, Armani you know, clothes or whatever the hell you want to buy, right? Or Supreme. Or... So that, the happiness, quote unquote, the dopamine hit that you get from buying something, it is because you f- already feel that you need it because you are not grounded in your own body at that moment. So it's like, if I bought this, but then there's also things we buy that are good for us. Yeah. Like every day we go and get coconut water, right? We have a glass jar that we give them in advance because we don't want to have that plastic shit, right? So we, we've bought these one liter glass jars that we give to them in advance. So we say in the morning, when you are filling the coconuts, you fill it straight into our glass jar. So we, it doesn't touch plastic. Yeah. And the, this family is really nice and they're doing it for us every single day. 
But most people, and I'm talking about 99%, because of the, I don't know, 500 people who go there, we're the only ones who do this glass jar deal, right? So, but to me, it's obvious, like, well, why am I going to drink in plastic? Like, it doesn't make any sense. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so my, my take is people are fed that you need X, Y, and Z, or you should be, or, or you won't be happy, right? You need it for fulfillment. What do, you, what do you feel is happening in Bali, in London, in other places you've been where, like, why does a person feel that they are not enough the way they are? Why do people seek synthetic and, and, and unnatural solutions to their, their life? The simple way that I would describe it, right, because I've been doing a lot of rambling, so I'll keep it, it's, it, it's because it's less easy for them. It's easy for them to believe the messages that that, that, are, that are put to them, and to and to not question things and not challenge why why they why they should do things differently. But I would also say, and this is this you know I've got I've got a major major the thing that annoys me most about the whole world um, is greed. Ah, uh, I really really I really 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 detest greed, right? And this is why I detest greed. I think it destroys. Um, people's lives it destroys the planet it destroys it creates it's the reason for war it's a reason for people suffering it's a reason for for people wanting too much and at the expense of other people and if not at the expense of the people at the expense of the planet and when you have when you have a world that is set up and the metric for deemed success is how much money, um, either how much money you have personally, how much you earn, but at a societal level, the performance of your, the success of your, any global economy is, is rated based on its gross domestic product, right? It's productivity. Uh, uh, and I think there's, I don't, I think it's, um, is it, is it Tibet or is it somewhere around there? Or one of these, what, in Nepal maybe? And the, the metric that they report on um, and the most proud of is the um, the uplift in happiness. They have a happiness metric at a societal level, right? And they each year they'll say, "Well, they, you were you were ninety one this year, and you were eighty nine last year, and like woohoo, like let's go, keep going, everyone, like we got this." And so why isn't that? Why is why is why is no one talking about that? Why are none of us? Why is nobody talking about that? And like I, I it's be, and this is the thing, right? We're set up, and I'm not saying capitalism is all bad, right? Because I am, I'm, I'm basically ninety percent hippie, ten percent capitalist, right? I am. Like this is just what I am, and I've come to terms with that. And um, eesh. but if if your entire metric for success is based on on how much money you can get people to spend on things that they may or may not want, therefore, um creating uh gross domestic products within a, a, an economy then that would be deemed successful therefore what actually happens is these countries don't care about what the cost is right so if you imagine that uh every force has an equal and, every force has an equal and opposite reaction what's the what's the what's the yeah every every action actually has an equal and opposite reaction so the you can't create a laptop you know, first thing i've seen without taking something from the earth right you can't do it you can't create anything without taking something ordinarily ordinarily so some things you, you can of course but at a societal and a, and a governmental level if you are not rewarding good behavior like creation of wonderful products that are low impact but you are still for me anyway if, you, if i get charged the same import duty or the same um sales tax irrespective of what i'm selling like if it's a, it's a pillow it's a pillow right there's not a good pillow and a bad pillow and i'm sure if there's like a bottle of water it's like 
there's probably like not a, a difference in tax rate between one that's sold out of a paper carton or one that's sold out of a plastic cart or whatever it might be, right? And this is the thing, and it there's there's just this propensity and I think it's, it's the, yeah, I think it's that the whole of the world is set up to want to just produce. Let's just keep producing stuff. The more we produce, like the greater we will be. It's like, no, actually we can't do that anymore. Like we're like, we fucked it. Like we've all fucked it. Like we can't do that. Like we've got to be a bit like smart about it. Now it's like, oh God, it's too late. Oh no, no. Like I think we'll still be okay. But it's like, this is why I just like to raise people's awareness of this a little bit more. But like to, th to answer your actual question, why do people feel the need to do that? Um, yeah, I guess I guess it's to do with insecurities. I guess it's to do with insecurities within within themselves that by um, by buying something, it will, which it does, it gives them a temporary sense of relief through a dopamine hit, um, and it, or it might mean that they are because of the, of the clever branding or advertising, they might believe that it um, it's more of a reflection on them as of a as it's a little part of them, right? So when people buy ethical bedding, right, they're not just buying the the sheets or whatever. They're 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 buying a little bit of the philosophy. They're buying a little bit of the like we get it. Like we kind of like get what these we we feel, they feel a little bit more like okay, like we're we're the we're them now. We're with, we're on their team now. Um, and you know when you said people might buy these like designer type brands or things like this. Yeah, I guess maybe that makes them feel a little bit elevated in them, themselves for some for some reason. Like I personally, I avoid branded clothes. I just they don't. It's not really like a thing for me. That's just me. I'm not saying it's right or wrong. If you want to, like, go ahead. Um, this is not an advertisement. I do, I do, I do wear. I do wear denim and I always buy my denim from Levi's. That's it. But it's not even really a brand that it's not an expensive brand. And that's just, the, and I, I'm really weird. Like I only wear, if I wear runners, I only wear Nike Air Max 90. That's just what I, that's just what I like. That's what suits me. And I'll have lots of different pairs of Levi's and well, two pairs of shorts, a pair of jeans, a pair of longer pants here for the American audience. And I'll wear Nike, I've got two pairs of Nike Air Max 90 with me. That's just what I have. That's what I like. And that's it. But, um, but what, yeah, again, like, why do I do that? Yeah, jeans, I guess it's comfort, shoes, I don't know, I just like them. But, I don't know, why do people have so much stuff? By mistake? Maybe they do by mistake. There are many moments in the day when we feel that we are not enough by ourselves. Like, we are okay, and everything is okay. Like, the love that you, we feel is enough. Most of the time, that's not the case. And if you are given a product which makes you feel the pain, and then the product says, hey, this, I will take away your pain from this, here it is, right? It's like, um, for example, if you need to buy uh, the newest iPhone, well, you have friends that have it, right? So... Now you maybe you see other people with this you know new whatever the newest iPhone is, and you're like, oh, I still have this old iPhone. I must be less than them. And look how happy they are. Look how awesome they are with this new iPhone. If I get the new iPhone, maybe I will be enough now. Maybe now I have complete. I'm now complete. Something like that. It's it is it is weird, isn't it? It's it's this psychology. There is this psychology of it. Probably every third iteration of iPhone, it might be worth taking an upgrade or whatever. Or if you're having battery issues, but the way the I mean, I mean, I, I don't know how you feel about Chat GPT, but it just came out the, this Chat GPT thing, right? The AI uh, chat bot that everyone is raving about. Like even in my company, um, we have like uh, people using it to write copy, they're using it to write, you know, VSLs and uh, feeding it for this and that. And man, I personally believe that it is a distraction. I believe that it is something that is not needed. I mean, if I even, if I haven't even worked out like my place in the universe and, and my traumas and the insecurities that I have and the stuff that I'm going through and my spirituality, 
why would I add this thing to the to my life? Why am I adding this? Like maybe people believe that adding this, you ask him something and it's going to give you a solution that you haven't thought of and maybe help you with your life. I personally don't believe so. I've not used it as a in an attempt to do anything enriching for my life, to be honest. Because I have patterns of behavior and habits that I've formed and a knowledge of myself that, that has not I've not I've not had the necessities to to do that yet. Um in the business we've used it. I've used it personally in the business as well for a couple of things and it's been really useful to frame um some solutions to things it's not come up with anything new or ingenious, but it's like, but it has like framed a few things, but a bit more clearly or like challenged my thought process, which has been useful. Interesting. I had a meeting last Tuesday, um, with someone that, a uh, French guy who, um, is, I'm considering several different people to lead the, um, like the B2B and the wholesale piece with, you know, hotels and airlines and cruise ships and blah, blah. I think he used it. We were speaking for maybe two or about two and a half hours, something like that. And he used it several times just during the course of the conversation to brainstorm stuff out. Um, and really, you, we're, yeah, yeah, very yeah. interesting. With like a really very, interesting. Like, very precise questions um, for idea generation and different things to attack, and it and it, and it was it was very informative. So. I can definitely see that there's huge value and, and benefits to um, AI. And this is the, this is what's really, you know, sort of interesting because it, as well, it, now it can present information in a, um, in a, uh, a very factual written way, right? Um, you can read the, read the information that it presents back to you, but this is what, this is what f it fascinates about me. Uh, for me personally, and it, which is why I'm, you know, this next year, two years, forever more, like placing an increased emphasis on being the face of my brand and speaking to people about things that I believe I can help with, elevating their consciousness, uh, information about sleep, how they can become better versions themselves, things that help me as an entrepreneur to get to a higher level of um, performance as a human, how can I share that with them, right? But this is where it's fascinating. All this information is just there now, if anyone actually wants to look for it. But it's how you, but you still want a human to present that information to you because you feel connected to a human, right? Now, yes, there'll be AI versions of, of presenting this information in one or two or three years, but these won't be characters that you know, right? And it's like, you have your, you know, Dr. Farhan, you have your own style and your own character and your way of presenting information and challenging the way that people think to build um, your personal brand and your, and your, which is totally intertwined with your business, right? And this is where we're getting to with ethical bedding. It's, you know, it's just this same journey. And, but I still feel like this is a necessity for some an actual real human yeah, i'm a real human look you can meet me you can touch me you can feel me like i'm a real because it's th th there's this level of authenticity there and what's fascinating for me is that i've had this discussion with a few people like, again in the body factory swimming pool um and we're like what does this what does this mean like as business owners what does it mean as humans and the thing that's that's wonderful in my mind um so I was always very good at learning information very quickly and retaining it and blah, blah, blah. Is it useful information? Maybe, maybe not. Will there be a necessity for people to learn it in future? Maybe, maybe not. Does it mean that the education system can change and we can start teaching young children about um, things of societal, societal importance, place more emphasis on the arts, place more emphasis on uh, nurturing and fostering good relationships um, and teaching spending more time and learning how to be good humans rather than learning information right uh, which might because it's instantly accessible even more so than ever 
So we'll see. I will see what happens with it. The most wonderful story that I've heard, or the theory that I've heard, that might happen as a result of it all, will be this huge, you know, um, like arts renaissance almost as a result of it. Not through AI-driven arts, but um, enabling people to have this enhanced level of creativity and artistic thinking because there's not a necessity for them to be funneled down a route of um this classical classical learning style that we were all typically taught in the school system in the western world and all over the world actually you know so that's we'll see we'll see what happens with it we'll see what happens with it but i think you've got to embrace it and even if you decide you don't like it and it's your enemy and you don't want to use it, you still need to to understand all of its capabilities and limitations and what it can and can't do because if it does give you a competitive advantage either as a brand owner or as a chip or just as a human, and it if it if it does enri- if it can enrich your life. And enrich the lives of others, then then it's a good thing, right? I think. So you're saying, give it a, give it, embrace it fully, give it a full chance, and then make a decision. It's like master the rules, and then you can break them. Poss- possibly, possibly. I mean, don't disregard it or dismiss it until you know what you are dealing with. I don't. I don't think. Especially if it's something. Yeah. I don't think you can. I don't think you can, but I don't, I don't think it's anything to be fearful of. I don't think it's anything to be scared of. I think it's, um, you know, it's a tool L- like any other tool. So, some people feel connected to it and some people won't, but what's, you know, this is what I mean when I say, you know, it's like so much like zoom out in business. Okay. Some bedding business is three years old. Great. Are we making amazing strike? Okay. Let's like zoom out five years. Let's zoom out 10, 20 years. That's when stuff starts to get crazy, right? Over a lifetime. Now imagine my son, he's three years old. By the time he gets to 10 and he's entering like whatever you could, um, like a secondary, secondary, like a more mature education level. It's like, think how advanced this stuff is going to be then. And like, what is the, what is the necessity for him to learn certain things in the ways that you and I would have learned them? Because the answers will already be there in lots of ways. And this is why, in my opinion, the education system is is the thing that needs to be really caref- carefully looked at in relation to this. And how are we, I say we, as a, as a society or as a, the administrators of education, ensuring that we are building skills for critical thinking, encouraging um, creativity in the arts, uh, encouraging um, behaviors that, that make us enrich the world and be good humans. That those, those are the types of things that there will be an increased, in, or there should be an increased level of importance on um as we progress and it's like it's hard to know it's really it's really hard to know and as ever i don't think traditional education will keep up and um yeah there's no there's no right or wrong you know um like my my son is in he's in london and he'll i'll have some input into what the types of education that he has and of course like i'll set him um you know, some, some, uh, you know, as he gets older, set him some little challenges and things that I would like for him to deem important for him to learn. And, um, as a, uh, you know, out of hours learnings, but if, um, were he to be living with me or were I to have another family, for instance, I don't think that I would be, well, I know for, I, we would be basically be a non-negotiable. I would not be keen on a traditional education methodology for um for, for my kids like it i just don't think it it's appropriate anymore i don't think i think the pace of change is too fast 
frankly. Um, and you fast forward 20 years, I'll be highly surprised if, if, if we aren't all queuing. In fact, 10 years, we'll be queuing up to have microchips put in our heads that give us access to what we would. There'll be honesty, like you said, oh, you've got to get the next iPhone. You've got to get the next chat GPT chip and get all the information like without even that is just what will happen. Like, would you not agree? Yeah. Like it or not. It's the way of it, right? Yeah, because if you imagine uh, something like Neuralink that connects you to a computer and then you can use that to transfer thoughts between people and those that, or even augmented reality, for for instance, just wearing those Apple glasses and walking around and you see a, a world that other people see, but then there will be people who don't have those AR goggles or the people who don't have the neural link or they can't afford it or whatever, they will be missing out. But will they be missing out? <laughs> like our ancestors versus us today versus what happens at a thousand years from now is anyone really, I mean, what's the, I guess there is a certain thing about consciousness where, for example, if tomorrow we were to find aliens, like in, in like mainstream, it, like everyone knows like aliens exist and they live on this planet this many light years away, that'll change our consciousness, right? That'll change the way we see life. The fact that, or, or, or very simply, right? Like, Back in the day, people used to think that the sun and all the planets are, are going around the earth, right? We're the center of the universe, blah, blah, blah. Uh, earth was created in 6,000 years. You know, nobody knew about evolution. Like we, And now, because of scientific discoveries and because of certain experiments, we have a different understanding of where we are in the universe. So perhaps ChatGPT, Neuralink, AI is the next step towards seeing where we are as a human species, basically understanding the universe better. So if we dismiss things or we would say, oh, this is not for me, I'm not going to embrace this, then it's probably our loss somehow. Even if it was or wasn't our loss, there's absolutely nothing that we can do about it. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I hate to, I hate to come back to it again, brother, but this is why I'm just like vibrations. Like if you get, if you're getting good vibrations, I don't, I don't, like, I don't, you can have, you can be, we can all be like linked up by like, you know, neuro chips and this and that and all, and all the rest of it. And we can all, if you get a good feeling inside you for something, these are the, th these things can't be replicated. They can only be like shared by the people that are encountering them, right? So, right. I don't know, man. It's um, James. The feeling. I don't know if we can trust it fully because sometimes we have a. I guess what you're talking about is an authentic feeling, like because a, a psychopath, serial killer will also get a good feeling, right? Before doing something, I'm sure you know Stalin had a good feeling while he was uh, imprisoning people. some It's in some way he had some good feeling. But what you're talking about is a different type of feeling. Uh, right? Uh, it's not a, not a feeling, not a feeling from... I'm talking about a feeling of a connection to another another person or persons rather than a... Rather than a um, a feeling from a completion of something which would bring you joy or satisfaction, however uh, heinous that might be. Um, but yeah, the between the, the, when you are when you get when you get a sense of someone, you get a sense of someone being um, on a connected level to you beyond that which we can see, smell, touch. Like a like an elevated sense of I don't know. 
like another another layer of of something that we can't see in the in the physical realm right or maybe not maybe i got it wrong but that's what i'd that's what i'd like to, that's what i'd like to believe that's what i'd like to believe yeah i'm i'm just i do find it fascinating to know what will happen with with um with and uh, most interestingly will be the pace of change right and but this is what I, this is the other thing right so you know it's right so you've said that so you get this augmented reality you get this and you get that and people can you know be in see the world in a different way and it comes this is what it comes back to again and this is what's fascinating right this is the fascinating thing about nature and the natural world we as humans for millennia if there is still some sort of connectivity between us that we don't know about yet which we might not have uncovered at a scientific level we'll know about different types of land and sea and and waterfalls and um havanas and whatever it might be and lush this and this and that and that and that and that like we know like it's there it's there within it and we and we enjoy it i challenge anyone not to spend time in nature and adore it right unless it's like you know they're inappropriately dressed I, I depress, very... depress, yeah, a depressed depressed yeah, a depressed person wouldn't enjoy it, but yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. There'd be, there would be, there would be scenarios. Like they'd look not... at a sun, they'd look at a sunset or a sunrise, and they wouldn't really feel the joy. I mean, that's like one of the key things about depression: you just don't enjoy anything. But besides that, besides the yeah. small percentage it, of people, typically, typically. So, why would there be? If you're happy with the simple things and the and the things that don't cost anything, and you're content as a human, and you and notice that I use the word content, not happy, content. If your level of contentment from these simple things, and you can keep it and 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 make make it remain high from deriving pleasure from the simplicity in these things, then you will be forever content, right? So. And again, like we, we as humans, we just add these complexities to our lives through striving to want more. And I don't know why, I don't know why we do it. I don't know why we do it. And apart from, you know, as you know, much earlier on in the conversation, you, you know, you mentioned, um, you know, however many, like thousands of years ago, we, we would have been maybe I think it's about maybe 10,000 years ago or more, more um, Homo sapiens would have been in, yeah, we would have been going around in groups of like 100 or 150, 200, whatever it would be, and we'd be hunting and fishing and foraging and doing our thing. And um, we would have been very happy and very content doing that, um, I would imagine, you know, um, purely because we wouldn't have known that there was anything more or we wouldn't have, you know, so there was no that you would have the fears of attack possibly from other tribes or you would have the fear of death from infection or but it would just kind of like be accepted i would imagine um whereas now we have all this now that we have more and more information are we necessarily like any happier as a, as a result of it i don't know i don't know um but it's almost like that, that that sort of way of living is is how we're designed to live, right? And we, we were just su surrounded by nature, surrounded by uh, loved ones, surrounded by a community of people. And this is probably why you love being in Tulum so much. And I love being here in Bali so much is that you have this like community. Well, I do anyway. There's a community of people. And we're kind of like looking out for each other in our own like little way. And, um, you know, it's... Um, I think it's, I think it's great. I think, you know, I think the, the way, the ways that we've set ourselves up to live is not, it's not fantastic. It's humans. Like it's not appropriate for us as humans. We should get, try and get back more into these ways of living. Sort of a reference point, which I look at whenever I want to get into something or not. Right. And, and this includes Chad GPT. It includes, uh, Things like uh, plant medicine, for example, or uh, you know, traveling somewhere to a different country. Right? It involves a lot of things that are 
something extra that I need to add to my life. And I simply ask myself, all these people doing chat GPT, well, I can talk to them. I talk to them. I know who they are. I know people who are using chat GPT the whole day, right? I can talk to them. Other people who are doing plant medicine in Tulum is oh, it's all about plant medicine, right? There's ayahuasca and mushrooms and abigaine and bufo and all this. I talk to them too, right? Talk to them as well. People who are doing plant medicine all the time and have done it uh, tens of times. And then I just simply ask myself, are these people any more special than anyone else? Like, are they flying? Right? Are they, uh, are they like, are they like going to escape death one day? Are they superhuman somehow with like superhuman power? No. Right? They're just like anyone else. And that sort of blueprint gives me my answer that there is something else that I need to focus my attention on. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. And, and, and so, so a simple example is if I look at my own body, the, the DNA sequence inside, you know, the, the epigenetic uh, processing that is happening, genes being turned on and off, I, and if I believe in, and, and I do, and I believe in this history of, of, of our species, you know, going back to God knows where, right? And, and I look at the scientific, this beautiful process that has evolved and, and produced human beings. And I look at how, how complex and intricate the universe is and, right? And I'm like, all this is already so much beauty and awesomeness. Yep. Why do I have the need to bring in an extra thing into my life? Like, why do I have this need to do a, some ceremony with someone? I totally hear you on this like ayahuasca thing and all this other stuff. And it seems like I, I'm like the sort, I am like this literally the sort of person where you'd be like, oh yeah, like definitely he's the kind of guy that's going to go and do that. I'm just like, what, do you know what it is for me? A, a little bit. I've got some friends that get, go and do it countless times. I'm like, I would rather investigate myself and understand my mind as well as I can and use tools that, 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 that I know of to uncover truths in myself. And I'm such a happy guy. Like, I'm so, like, I really like, I'm just like very chilled, very happy. And, it's like what I like, I don't have like what's how we, is this going to enrich? I can't see that this is going, again like same thing for you. How is this going to enrich my life? And it seems like a lot of the people that are doing it. Are this I, 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 sorry if I offend anyone here, but it's like what have you actually done all of the 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 work on yourself that you possibly could do yet? It feels to me it's more like oh, so you can't be bothered to. Um, to do all the things that we kind of like know that we're capable of as a human anyway. So drink this and I'll tap you on the head with a feather and um, then you can like, you know, everything is going to be like pretty much brilliant for you thereafter. It's like, well, no, like it doesn't work like that. I don't know, but I think, you know, I've got a bit of a... I can see that it, it probably does benefit some people and in it... I don't know, maybe I'm being closed-minded, but... Yeah, I... I think that people, a lot of people are in a state of crisis. They're in a state of desperately needing to heal. And they see the outside influences as a way to ease the process of healing. They can get there faster. And they also know that this shamanic rituals and tribes and you know these are basically doctors yeah from a, like a spiritual doctor and they have friends who've healed they hear stories i mean rula you know our, our friend rula mutual friend who's i think he's might still be in bali he is i saw him the day, yeah yeah so we we were around a circle in vancouver once uh near a fire you know fireplace in the middle it was sort of like a men's circle type thing but it was a party and we were just you know in a circle 
And he told me about his uh, DMT experience and how he got launched out of you know, outer space. And it was like a 15 minute thing, but he lived his whole life. And like, he saw all these visions of his, him being a grandfather and dropping the kids. And it was just like this wonderful, crazy experience. And he highly, highly recommended it. And then three years later, he asked me, hey man, have you done that yet? I'm like, nope, I haven't done it. And he was surprised that I still haven't done it. And, and, and the way I see it is like all the people who do it, they're still the same. Like they're still human. Like they're like me. Um, it's like you may see visions and, and obviously the brain is complex. The brain is able to do a lot of cool things, right? This, this wiring is, and we haven't even touched 0.0001% of what this brain can do. Yep. And using a psychedelic to have these visions okay, the brain is giving you these visions. It doesn't necessarily mean that you're in some other dimension or you like, you know, the brain has the capability of feeling death. It has the capability of feeling life. Yep. When we're dying and there's a DMT release and, and you get these visions and life flashing before your eyes, well, the brain is capable of doing that, obviously. So you take a plant and that happens and you feel that you are in some other dimension or you feel one with the universe. Well, the brain has the capability of doing that. So you can do it without the plant medicine. It may be, you know, it may take 50 years, but but it's possible. I, you know, hitting some like very deep meditative state or doing something, doing something. There's got to be some, I, I don't know, like you would know more than I do, do you, whatever whatever the chemicals that are going on with these with these things, but I get it. Do you find as well, I've, this is what I found a little bit, because I am kind of like, the, I'm literally like, you'd have one look at me and think, oh yeah, he'll be doing that. That's, that's, he, he'll be there every week doing that, that guy. But the people not only seem a little bit surprised that I haven't, that I haven't done it, but some some people uh, they're almost like a bit. I feel like they're a little bit pushy with it. Like be like like you, it, see, like a little bit, like a little bit. Oh, you really like you really. And I'm kind of just like I don't. Like I don't need to. I don't need to. Um, I'm not saying I wouldn't do it. At some point in my life, like that would be. But I just don't. I don't. I, I, it's not something that's. Uh, I, I don't. I don't deem it as necessary for the, like you say, the enrichment and the enhancement of my, of my life. I just don't, it's, it's not, it's, it's, it's just very strange. I just, I, I don't know. I don't, obviously there's probably a slightly different crowds or maybe quite similar doing it in Tulum. And there's obviously a, um, you know, it's, it, it's, it's over here as well in Bali. And I was in Costa Rica for a few months last winter and, um, th there was a lot of it going on there. A lot of it. Okay. Certainly, I noticed this in Costa Rica. It seemed to be people that were either missing something or they were seeking something, and it was like, once I've done this, I'll be good. And I and I think some of these people couldn't understand how is he just good all the time? How does that work? Right. <sighs> So, but there's, 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 there's got to be something in it. And I think, you know, to do with, um, like lots of these psychedelics and there's all sorts of things like, you know, you obviously you would have seen lots of the studies with LSD, um, in terms of trauma relief, trauma, um, trauma relief, trauma. Yeah. But it, it's amazing medicinal qualities, you know, outlawed because of blah, blah, blah. And it's the same with the same with um, uh, MDMA as well in terms of relieving symptoms of um, PTSD and but it's not really used um, uh, as medication anywhere. I don't believe is it. I don't think it is. MDMA is uh, approved, almost approved, I believe. Ketamine has been approved already for depression, and uh, MDMA will be approved very soon for for uh, PTSD, or it's already been approved. But MDMA is the next one. Ketamine is done, MDMA, and then psilocybin will be after that. What's psilocybin? Magic mushrooms. Ah, 
it's the it's the it's the active chemical in uh, active compound in magic mushrooms is psilocybin. Well, it's obviously since the '60s or whenever there's been this knowledge of like what what LSD particularly can do and MDMA as well. Um, there's been this knowledge of what what it can do, but it's been held back from. Oh yeah, from it's like what's that about? Why? What's who did that? Who made that like bad call, dude? Like you've just like, <laughs> I, come on. <laughs> seriously yeah a lot of bad calls man I mean people who can control the way drugs and medicine is is given to society are the pharmaceutical companies more or less so for example when these plant medicine are approved by science and they do the studies and everything is safe and you know the dosages are all worked out a pharmaceutical company will grab it and somehow figure out a way that a person can take it for life and be dependent on it. Somehow they'll figure it out. I don't know how yet because you can do one trial of, of uh, mushrooms or ayahuasca and basically like a lot of people have their addictions gone away. A lot of people lose the fear of death, right? There's all these factual things that have happened like at Johns Hopkins this happened. Uh, Roland Griffiths is the professor who did the studies, and uh, he showed that a, a large proportion of the people who did um, uh, this was studying what was it? It was psilocybin. Yeah, it was a psilocybin trial. They did a psilocybin. Uh, they did a heroic dose, like a four or five grams, a high dose, and uh, their fear of death went away, gone. Like I think it was uh, two thirds of the people. Uh, very high uh, high percentage. So we know that these plants have a, a real effect on people and especially people who are near death, right? They're older. But nevertheless, man, nevertheless, no matter what impact uh, this can have, I think if we really pay attention and become aware of our inside, you know, our our inner self in a deeper way, because it's also like, if you believe that there is a universe that is interacting with you, if you believe that there is an energy, a vibration that is synchronized with you, then that thing will guide you. Yeah. Simple, right? You don't have to like say, oh, if I take this plant, well, no, whatever this plant medicine is going to do to change this, well the thing you're interacting with, the place you are, also has the capability of doing that because it's all here, right? It's, it's under our uh, volition. We are able to generate these thoughts and emotions. And so, yeah, man, I, I'm, um, I'm like you. Maybe I'll do it at some point with a shaman and, and so on. Yeah. And I, you know, I'm not saying, I, I mean, I've definitely tried psychedelics in the past and uh, some more than others, you know, a, 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 at least a few of them, but I, I never did it properly, like with a shaman and with the ceremonies, none of that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's likely that I'll do it one day, but I've also done a Vipassana retreat for 10 days where it was, you know, a 10-day retreat where we're just quiet and you meditate all day and don't look at anyone. So I did that and that was a transformative experience as well. So... Yeah, man, I think it's uh, it's just if we can if we can get to a state where we are good, and you said the right word, content. That content is enough. That's the goal, and the, and and the, the real the real secret to to a happy life is is contentment, and the the lower your, in my opinion, the lower your um your needs, your wants, your desires, the greater chance of you being content and therefore being happy, right? It's only when you want, keep wanting for more and wanting for more and wanting for more that your baseline level of contentment um, uh, will proportionately go down because you don't, well, I want more. And it's like, well, actually, like, you don't, do you, what do you, what are your needs? What are your needs as a human, right? And it's this is what I mean. It's like 
the, the more joy you can get from the simple things in life. It sounds really cliche. It's, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty, it's pretty simple stuff. But, I mean, this is, it's still fascinating for me though. And um, I've kind of, I've basically put a barrier up for, in, around myself at the moment. I'm like, I can't do that until the business has hit this level. I definitely can't do it. <laughs> I honestly, I know I have. Because <laughs> I'm like, oh yeah, because like, what if something happens to my brain? I'm like, I need my brain into like, <laughs> I know exactly how you feel. But I think it's, a, it's like a false barrier, but I'm just like, ah, look, I'll just, that's what I'm, that's the, that's the narrative. That's the story that I'll tell myself to stop to, so that I don't have to do that basically. So, yeah. Um, but I think you, at some point like you, I think it would be probably be a little bit narrow minded not to do it. I don't know, man. I know, I know, uh, people, my mentors that I look up to like one of which is Robert Sapolsky is a neuroscientist at Stanford. And I've read most of his books and, um, highly, you know, I re highly respect him. The newest book he's writing now is about free will. It's called determined the science of life without free will. And, um, he never did anything. He, yeah, he never has done drugs, alcohol, plant medicine, none of that. And, uh, so there are definitely people and I don't think he's narrow-minded at all. Uh, in fact, he's he's the opposite of that. He's very uh, far-reaching, and he spent 35 years, uh, you know, every summer for 35 years in the Serengeti in Kenya studying uh, baboons I want to. to understand behavior. Yeah, man, really, really awesome dude. It's very close call death experiences for that guy. Yeah, I bet. So yeah, man, I I, I like the I like the 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 content. Um, I, 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 I wanted to ask you one more thing, James, um, before we end, and that is, um, what advice do you have for people who want to live a, a life of content and, and you can touch on relationships and spirituality and health and as many, as many buckets as you want, but really someone who is looking for and struggling with their money issues, struggling with self-esteem, struggling with insecurities from the past. What what advice do you have for them? Yeah, it's not it's not straightforward, is it? It's certainly not straightforward. I think I was I was lucky enough to be able to strip myself down to nothing and rebuild myself in a way. that I had designed through circumstances which were not favorable at the time. So it was out of necessity. It was out of necessity to do this, this introspection. But if you, and if you know that you, that you're not content, you need to be really honest with yourself and understand why you need to be really honest about what your drivers for happiness are. So I'm very clear what my drivers for happiness are, right? Like I love, I love exercising. I love spending time with, uh, with friends, with family. Um, I love progressing towards my goals, my business goals. Um, everyone has different things that bring them like their pillars of joy, their pillars of happiness, right? It's way too much information for everyone all the time about what they should be doing, what they shouldn't be doing, what they should want, what they shouldn't want. And really you should ask yourself, what, what is it, what is it really that you want? Or do people lack contentment because they're in relationships that are making them unhappy? Have they thought about why they're in those relationships? Have they thought about what their life would be like if they weren't in those relationships? Are they romantic relationships? Are they friend relationships that aren't serving them? Do they understand what's, what, when I say serving them, I, I mean, is it a two-way street of of enriching each other's lives, right? Because you can you can choose your friends, you can choose your friends, and if if you choose friends that are enriching for each other's lives, then that's that's what it should be, really. Um, and your romantic partner, we've touched on this already. With family, it's it's very different, of course, because. Um, 
because you don't choose your family, but you can create boundaries around ways that you expect to be uh, treated. And you can again do this in your in any relationship, business, friends, romantic contentment. I would challenge anyone that isn't content if their circumstances allow to survive with the absolute bare minimum. If you survive with the bare minimum, clothes on your back, enough money to, to eat and do what you need to do for a while, and spend you'd spend more time understanding yourself. I don't think there's like a I don't think there's a trick to it. I don't think there's a I don't feel like there's like a secret to it. And again, check in with yourself. Give yourself those reminders. Like, have your techniques. Like, do your gratitudes every day. And make sure that your gratitudes are for simple things. Like, some, some of my, I mean, like, some every day, mine are always from, the, the, always, like, for my son. Um, usually, for, it sounds silly, but for my business. Um, for my, for my, I, I, you know, this is what I say to my, my ability to give and receive love, like the, and, and again, like I'm not even that good at that sometimes, but it's ingraining that this thought process in my head, that's like reinforcing that no, you can receive love, you can give love. Um, and analyze your philosophy of what, of, of what you, of what your life is, right? Like I'm at a point now in my life whereby if I leave an interaction with somebody and we all, like, I'm human, we're all human. And sometimes I say or do things that I think oh, my tone of voice wasn't great or my mind was elsewhere when I was speaking to that person, they might've thought I was rude. I feel really bad about it. After I leave, I'll oh, damn like, I, that was like, have I made that person's, have I been like a net detractor from that person's life today? If you, if you actively in your engagements and your interactions with people behave in a really positive, outwardly positive way and try and make them feel good. That makes you feel good as well. Like, I'm not saying that's going to, you know, change the world, but you never know it might do. And it will certainly, um, you know, enhance your level of happiness and contentment. Um, it's difficult. It's really difficult. And it's not like this one size fits all because it's diff I was like, right, I'm starting again, and this is what I'm doing when I'm starting again, and th these are this is what this is this is what aligns to me. But a lot of people don't have that privilege, right? If they have a like a mortgage, a career, and a mortgage, and a family, and a this and a that and a that, they can't just like, well, I'm just going to strip everything down and and do this. Um. So I, do you know what I would say actually, R rather than what would be the advice that I would give for somebody to change their circumstances to become more content? I would say it's probably more important to ingrain from a younger age, let's say teens, or when we start to become to be cognitively aware and have ideas of what we might want to do, to start ingraining some of those behaviours and understanding at those sorts of ages, which will mean that people don't deviate away and find themselves in scenarios later on in life, which is where they usually might find that they lack contentment, but it's too late. It's almost easier to like start to, to start that piece much earlier. And you know, like I, not to go back to it, chat GPT, no need for no need for this type of information. Maybe we can teach people how to, to in, enrich their lives from a contentment perspective. So <laughs> I don't know exactly. I fundamentally as well, to be honest with you, mate, I, I go to bed at the same time. I wake up at the same time. I eat largely the same food every day. I train at the same same schedule. Like I work in the same. Pa Is it a little bit boring? Yeah, maybe sometimes. Like, do I find that's why I like kind of have to find these joys in like small things. And I don't know. It's weird. I don't know. I'm not a very good guest. I can't give you the answer. Uh, I can't, I can't no. give you the answer. But you know, James, you, you touched on so many things and I agree with you because I am also the same way. I wake up at the same time, sleep at the same time, seven days a week, train at the same time. I don't f find that boring at all. I love it. I love it, man. I love the disciplined life. It's actually freeing. It's so much freedom. Because like, I don't have to think about what I'm gonna, about to do because I know. Like, I know exactly what's going to happen. And it's like, wow, that's so cool. And then 
obviously life throws things at you that is random, chaotic, and you deal with it because you're ready. You're like, yeah, I've actually, I've already planned for this. Let's go. But I do love that we are at least touching this concept of content. Um, people say, a, a lot of people talk about happiness and joy and peace, but the word content is a, a, a bit different, right? It's like fulfillment, satisfaction. It's a different game. It's the, ne the necessity, well, the lack of necessity to want for more. It's just like, yeah, I like I'm good. Like, just, it is like the, the, ult the ultimately just being so grateful and taking pleasure from things that, I don't know. It's almost like it can't be forced either. It's just like you kind of might just like get to that state through a series of other things. Um, and it's not arrogance or anything. It's like a real, real feeling of, no, I'm good. I'm good. It's, it, it's a fun, like, and I've, again, I've, I've described this to a few people. If, if, I feel, not everyone, but I, f I feel like, especially with new people, if I spend enough time with them, again, it's not, it's, it's only very few people. If I spend enough time with certain new people and it's enough time, I feel like some of them are like, why is this guy like I've been, like I'm like irritating them because I'm so just like yeah okay like whatever like yeah great I just content I'm just like so content everyone's like how like how do I do that like what's the deal like how does that happen like what's the and it irritates them and I'm like well, all right. just go with the flow it, it it probably irritates them because they don't have that feeling and they're like why does he have it and I don't have it. Yeah, yeah, I think it's beautiful, man. I think it's I think it's really cool. I think it might be it might be a result of trauma of trauma recovery. I think it might be a result of extreme trauma recovery, and the necessity for me to have put myself in a perpetual state of mind whereby, like, I'm forcing myself to see the joys in in so many different things in life, and having been in um, scenarios and situations where I've been so deeply unhappy that everything is just that little bit more wonderful now. There's just so much more magic in the world now because I'm not in those scenarios anymore. So maybe that that's a little bit. Yeah, I wish I wish like I knew what the secret was. I re like I wish I I should try and, probably try and figure it out. Maybe there is no secret, man. I don't think there's a secret. Yeah, we just live. People who think they know a secret, nah, I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't. It's just a marketing thing. Secret this, secret that, nah. See, the, the only secret I can think of is the present moment. That's the secret. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Ah. That's a, it's a good place to... Uh, end <laughs> yeah let's I, I enjoyed that i enjoyed that thank you buddy yeah, yeah thank yeah, you yeah. for uh the love and the care that you give to the world and all the beautiful products you make and will continue to make and i'm excited to try those eucalyptus pants for sure man Any they're gonna day. be unbelievable they're gonna be um, oh I'm, my god I'm, I'm literally gonna do so many things out, out of like all these yeah. interesting things i can't wait I can't wait. Like I've got a lifetime. Like I'm just so buzzed by it. So, yeah, man. And and I and I hope and pray that you get the best people around you that are Thank just you. like you. Thank and, you. And uh, this this way you can uh, scale faster, and which is the dream. Thank you. Oh, exciting times. <laughs>